Ayan. Okay na. Okay na. Ayan. Hello, 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 haller, ganon. Okay. Ayan, keri na ata. Parang narinig ko na dun sa may TV ko sa labas kasi yun yung ano ko eh. Meron na mga mga Yes. Oo, oh, oh, ayan o, oh, kita nyo nga si, si Marco Flores lang nagsabi. Oh, his tupat lang yan, hindi yan lalabas. Charing lang. Ang ituturo ko sa inyo ay eh, kung paano nila tinuturo sa mga histotechnology majors to. Kasi sa, sa US class, iba sila magturo. Okay? Hindi kayo mag-aaral ng immunology, serology, hematology, and blood banking dito sa US. Associates degree ata ang kailangan ninyo para maging histotechnician kayo dito. So, it's technically like two years. Okay? So, walang, um, yun yung pagkaka-ano ko, pagkaka-understand ko sa education system nila. Okay? So, class, advance, kung tutuusin, mas madami tayong, mas madami tayong inaaral, mas magaling tayo sa kanila, which is obvious naman, kasi syempre, gal galing kayo sa aking, galing kayo sa aking sinapupunan, di ba? Lalo na yan si Renmar, yan ang biological son ko eh. Tsaka si, ano, si Valiant, yan ang ano ko. Ay, sorry, daughter, sorry, sorry, sorry. Nandyan ba si Renmar? Parang hindi ko nakita si Renmar. Hindi ko nakita nag-hi. Ay, ayan, anak. Nandyan ka pala, anak. Good morning, anak. Ayan. Okay, buti pa si, si Renmar nag good morning, oh. Siyempre, laki sa, galing sa akin yan. Okay, so, next slide tayo. Okay. Ay, ne, nawala ang slide. <laughs> nawala ang slide show mo yun. Ayan. Next slide na tayo. So, what, we will, what will you learn in, in this lecture? May question mark dapat yan. Hindi ko kasi naidagdag. <laughs> Kanina ko lang yan binasa, tapos hindi ko na in-edit ulit. Pinatype ko sa secretary ko. Okay? So, what will you learn in this lecture? We'll learn everything from fixation to staining. Hopefully, matapos natin lahat or as much as possible. Even if hindi natin matapos, I will still send materials for you to study. So, wala kayong takas sa akin. Okay? So hanggang ano tayo? Hanggang staining tayo. Kasama na doon ang immunohistochemistry, kasama din ang chemical stains and enzymatic studies as well as troubleshooting, as well as troubleshooting um, abnormal slides. Because part of the job, part of the job of a histotechnologist is to trouble is to do quality control. That's why we have a tissue committee in the ho hospitals that I've worked in in different laboratories you'll understand why it's important to be part of a tissue committee when you study uh, when you work abroad and i think most of you would want to work abroad tama ba tama ba wala walang gustong magtrabaho abroad loyal sa pilipinas send send a send a heart sign kung gusto niyo magpupunta magpunta abroad ayan si Renmar si Renmar naghahanap ng afam <laughs> si naghahanap ng afam okay so may importance ang tissue committee um in the United States a tissue committee are the people who um basically they're the antibiogram version the, the people who works in the infection control committee okay If you're familiar with the Infection Control Committee, sila yung nagbibilang kung ano yung mga outbreak na nanggalat sa ospital. So, si Tissue Committee, ilan yung mga slides na dapat na-diagnose si ganto pero hindi nakita, yung mga ganun. Ganun ang trabaho nila. Okay? Yung mga tumor na hindi na-detect until such time na lumaki na lang yung tumor, yun yung mga trabaho nila. That's a tissue, that's a, what, that's what the job of a Tissue Committee is. What else is there? We'll learn definitions, of course. We'll learn everything from fixation to to staining, to troubleshooting. We we'll learn tra quality control and obviously to what types of chemicals may be hazardous in the laboratory. Okay? So those are what, uh, so aside, uh, introductions aside, let's start with the discussion. We'll start, I'll start my discussion, of course, with definition of terms. Next slide, please. So we'll start with what is histotechnology? Okay? What is histotechnology? So, histotechnology is the science related to processing tissues and microscopic detection of abnormalities to aid in the diagnosis and monitoring of treatment uh, of, of the treatment of diseases. Okay? So, ano ba ang trabaho ng mga histotechnologists? Okay? Mag-process ng tissue, tingnan, ang, tingnan kung maganda ang slide, and what? And monitor the reagents. Kasi, di ba? Magmedtech ka, you have the, you have the, you have the noble, um, noble duty to what? Discard and dispose biological, discard slash dispose biological and chemical waste, di ba? 
So kailangan ninyo mag-monitor. So yun ang ano ninyo. Wala kayong kinalaman, wala tayong kinalaman. may kinalaman pa rin tayo sa Hippocratic Oath which is taken by doctors or the Nightingale Oath which is taken by nurses which me, uh, which all comes from the emphasis of do no harm. Okay? So everything that we do in the laboratory must not harm what is outside the laboratory and that and that also includes ourselves. Okay? So Sir, akala ko pag histopat, tumor lang ang tinitingnan natin, tsaka yung mga biopsy. Bakit may monitoring of treatment of the diseases? Yun yung mga exploratory biopsies. Okay? So, for example, naoperahan na si... Let's say, dagdag, lagyan natin, for, for example, ng sakit si... Ano, si, my, si Patrick. Okay? Si Patrick. Kasi feeling ko malakas uminom to eh. For example, may tinanggal sa biliary tract niya na maliit na tumor. Um, cholecyst, cholecystioma. Okay? So, in his biliary tract, they, they cut off the smallest portion of that. Well, they detected it early and they cut it off. But they found that through histopathology, uh, through the histopathology department or the histopathology report that it is cancerous. Okay? Or, let's say, malignant, rather. Means it could spread. Okay? He underwent uh, chemotherapy. And after a year, he came back to the hospital to get an ex-lap uh, ex surgical procedure. What is ex-lap? X-lap is exploratory laparoscopy. Tutusukan ka ng mga tubo sa tiyan mo. Okay? Tapos, merong camera yon. Titingnan kung okay pa yung ano mo, macroscopically, then kukuha ng biopsy specimen, padadala sa laboratory, titingnan kung effective yung treatment kay Patrick. Gets? Kasi malakas siyang uminom. Kasi kahit na naggamot na siya, may diagnosis na siya in everything, uminom pa rin si Patrick, di ba? Naku, unhealthy ang lifestyle. Mga ganun-ganun na keme. Okay? Clear tayo. So, hindi lang diagnosis. Diagnosis uh, falls in a lot of, um, falls in a lot of, uh, there's a lot of duties and responsibilities when it comes to diagnosis. When, it, when you're looking at a slide, you have to look at whether or not you're going to detect something. You're going to stage if there is something. What do you mean by staging? Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, which also falls in line with the understanding of the patient's prognosis. Can anybody here understand? Uh, can anybody here tell me what is uh, the definition of prognosis? Yung pagkakaalam nyo lang, ayoko ng chat, ano, ayoko ng chat GPT at saka ng ano, ng kahit Tagalog. What is a prognosis? Iba ang diagnosis sa prognosis, ha? Hana. Very good. Diyan malalaman sa prognosis kung, for example, may kinuha kay Patrick. Tas kumaka si Patrick ang example namin siya, natin na siya, ang cadaver natin ngayon. Okay? Let's talk about Patrick as a, as a as our specimen for today. So, for example, si Patrick, we found out na nagkaroon ng remission. When we say remission, bumalik yung cancer ni Patrick. Kasi nga inom siya ng inom. Okay? Theoretical lang to ha. Hoy Patrick ha. Baka mamaya na offend ka na ha. Theoretical lang to. Alam ko mga estudyante ngayon lit na TikTok ano na kayo. TikTok ano na kayo ha. TikTok uh, ano. Ganyan ako talaga mag-example sa mga students ko. Baka sabihin ano ba yan si sir. Grabe naman. Napaka morbid na mga predictions. Hindi siya prediction. Theoretical ano lang siya ha class. Let me be clear. Baka mamaya may mga ubiikot na yung mga mata. Tsaka bumubula yung ano eh. Magsusumbong na sa magulang. Ganyan ako magturo para mas maintindihan ng mga students. Kasi nakaka-relate sila kay Patrick. ba <laughs> Kilala nila si Patrick. At pag nasa exam sila, ang aalalahanin nila ay si Patrick, okay? So, sa buong klase natin, si Patrick ang example natin for today, okay? Okay? Bakit, sir? Basta, wala lang. Trip ko lang. Gusto kong bigyan ng tumor si Patrick, eh. Okay? Alright. So, anyways, let's continue. Um, say, for example, uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick had remission, okay? In the histopathology lab, or sorry, in the histopathology report, hindi, doc, hindi medtech ang gumagawa ng report. Just to be clear, okay? Hindi medtech ang gumagawa ng report. Nagtatype ang medtech ng report in some labs, okay? Pero hindi gumagawa ng report ang medtech. Hindi din medtech ang nagpa-file ng report. Or nag, nagagawa ng, um, ng staging or ng diagnosis, okay? Clear? So, for example, nagkaroon ng remission, prognosis is yun na ibibigay 6 months ka na lang mabubuhay, Patrick. Ganun, yung mga nakikita natin sa movies. Prognosis is something like that. Essentially, it's something like that. Okay? Determining whether or not the outcome is good. Okay? Um, wala, na, wala na, Patrick. Wala na kaming nakita sa ano mo, sa tumor markers mo. Mga ganon na mga kemerut. Okay? Alright, let's go to the next slide. What is a histotechnologist naman? O, yan na, sinabi ko na sa inyo, ba? A histotechnologist is a laboratory professional who does what? 
who is who is what who prepares and processes surgical samples to be examined by an anatomical pathologist okay sir last last week sinabi niyo sa akin sinabi niyo sa amin meron tayong parts of the laboratory kaya nga maganda siyang pagcombinein sa exam kasi doon yung makikita yung difference ng clinical and anatomical pathologist ano nga Renmar ano nga ulit ang difference ng clinical at saka ng anatomical pathologist Yes. Oi, nope. An anatomical pathologist can also be hospital based. Next tayo. Ibang tao, sige. Bye. Kasi katabi mo sir yung picture ni Renmar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bye. What's the difference between an anatomical pathologist and a clinical pathologist? No idea. Okay. Clinical. Hmm. Okay. So, all right. Sige, para klaruhin natin. Ang anatomical pathologist, ang trabaho niya is surgical samples lang. Tinitingnan niya is surgical samples lang. Most of the time. Hindi lahat, ha? Kasi may mga body fluids din, di ba, sa surgery. Okay? Pag clinical pathologist, nandiyan na pumapasok. Lagi nyo lang iisipin, clinical pathologists, every subject except histopath. Okay? Okay? Pag sinabing clinical pathologist, every subject except histopath. Lahat ng subject natin, except histopath. Okay? Clear? Clear kayo? Pag sinabi nating anatomical pathologist, lahat ng lahat ng subject hindi kasali, pwera lang sa histopat. Ay bahala kayo kung anong gusto niyo alalahanin. But that but that is the case. Ay po, may maganda mga ilalagay na case presentation na eh. <laughs> Sir Marco, may mga mailalagay tayo as case presentation. Humanda kayo sa akin. <laughs> All right, let's go with the definition of um, a certain branch of medicine. This is the branch of medicine that deals with the examination of cells from different body sites other than blood okay other than blood so yan na nga yung mga body fluids na sinasabi ko kanina wherein the goal is to understand the disease process and or dapat end or yan reach a diagnosis okay so what's that so from the keyword itself it sells cytology diagnostic cytology all right from the keyword itself it's diagnostic cytology sir bakit ganun? Bakit kailangan kasama? Kasi ang subject niyo is what? Histopathology and cytopathologic techniques. How you will treat the how you will treat the tissues and surgical specimens is different in how you treat cytological specimens. Okay? Clear? Clear? Clear ba lahat? Magkaiba ang processing ha? Same din ang same ang chemicals na ginagamit when it comes to fixing specimens, but the treatment of the the treatment of the samples are are quite different. There's a stark difference between the two. Okay? Alright. Let's go to the next one. This is the branch of cytology. May branch pa ng cytology. Pinapahirapan nyo kami, Sir Manuela. The branch of cytology that deals with the studies, uh, that studies cells from these squamated cell epithelial surfaces is known as exfoliative cytology. The most common form is cervico-vaginal pap smear. Yung mga magdodoktor sa inyo, sa inyo ako magpapap smear. Okay? pag ab siguro pagkatapos ninyo ng pagkatapos ninyo ninyo ng residency eh pagkatapos na ninyo ng med school magaano na kayo mag magpapathology residents na kayo tapos pwede na ako makahanap ng libre noon 'di ba after four years 'di ba kasi pwede na yun time na ako time ko na yun eh 35 years old and above kailangan nagpapa-check na regularly ng pap smear so kailangan libre na ako noon class ha <laughs> Renmar anak ka ituloy mo pag ituloy mo ang try ituloy mo ang inumpisahan ng ina ha <laughs> Sayo ako magpapapap smear anak charing okay so cervical vaginal smears uh, it could be different types of smears also we could use we could use um we could use um yung kinakatam yung balat alam niyo yung kinakatam yung balat alam niyo yung process ng pangkakatam yung pag, pag ini-smoothen yung yung ano yung yung kahoy 
di ba, parang block doon na eh, ginaganon. Meron din tayong uh, tinatawag na sliding ano, sliding slide cutter. So, pwede din yun gamitin for exfoliative cytology. Dinagdag ko lang siya kasi common na mga samples yan na marireceive sa cytology. And I think 90% of the samples are, are either cervicovaginal smears or yung mga skin mga skin tags na mga isinisend sa laboratory or derma, dermatologic specimens to um to better understand the disease process in mole formation. Mga dermatologist ang mga kaibigan natin diyan. Okay? All right. Kaya kailangan maging mabait sa lahat ng tao sa lab, ha? di ba? Hindi lang histopat ang tinuturo ko sa inyo, GMRC din sa hospital. Kailangan mabait ang mga ano kasi yan yung mga nagbibigay ng libre ng mga kapsula ng ano, ng gluta. Ha? Kailangan mabait kayo diyan sa mga kailangan mabait kayo doon sa mga residente at saka sa mga attending ng ano, ng derma, derma. okay? Okay, now let's move on to the next slide. What are the types of specimens usually received in the histopathology laboratory? So there are two types of specimens that you will definitely receive receive in the in, in the histopathology lab. It's either an autopsy specimen or a surgical specimen. So surgical let's start with the surgical specimens first. Lagay ko lang yan kasi ano, alphabetical order ang gusto ko. Um surgical specimens these are biopsy tissues or organs from an operation. So buhay pa yung tao. When you say autopsy specimens, specimens that come from cadavers or cadavers, okay? These are specimens that are examined to determine uh, that are examined to determine the cause of death. Paano namatay? Okay? Paano nagkaroon ng sakit is different from paano namatay. Okay? Clear tayo dyan, ha? Hindi ko tuturo sa inyo yung mga hindi tinatanong sa lahat. Alam ko lagi tinuturo. Tinuro sa inyo yan yung, yung, the, yung the, pro, the disease process. Hindi yan kasi, hindi yan tin, never pa ako. I, I, I think uh, Sir Marco would echo my statement when I said na hindi itatanong sa board exam ninyo yung, yung algor mortis na yan, yung rigor mortis na yan. Lahat yan, lahat yan lumalabas sa mga practice test pero... Through the years na nagtuturo, through the years na nagturo ako, never ako nakarinig naman nagsabi akong colleague sa akin na tinanong sa kanila yung disease processes na yan yung yung what is programmed cell death basically uh, basically that's um cariolysis, pycnosis and so on and so forth, okay? Or dissolution. But um what I want to focus in um, in my lecture today because I I have limited time is what is going to be asked in the in the exams, okay? Clear? All right. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay, sir. Um, before before I move on, pala, sir, kasama din kami sa autopsies. Yes, there are there have been two times in my life that I've assisted in autopsies. One when I was an intern and one when I was a staff. Okay, nalaglag ang nalaglag ang nalaglag ang bangkay sa akin, kasi mabigat. <laughs> Mas mabigat pala sa buhay na tao ang ano. <laughs> <laughs> Nung intern ako, hindi ko alam, nagiginig ako kasi first time ko makakita ng patay na tao, class. <laughs> medyo, medyo malakas sa loob ko nung staff na ako dun sa ano. Thank you, thank you kay Dr. Ano, kay Dr. Landicho for, for ano, shout out ko nandyan pa siya, kung buhay pa siya or ever. Okay, kung nasaan man siya. Okay? Medyo may, medyo may kaedad, may edad na yun eh. Alright, next. What are the types of biopsies? Uh, there are several types. I think there are a lot actually. Can we show them all the types of biopsies that they might see in the exams? So FNAB is what? Fine needle aspirate biopsies, um, core needle biopsies, um, surgical biopsies, yun yung mga kinuha talaga, okay? Through the use of scalpels. <laughs> Shave biopsies, yun yung sinasabi ko, yung kinakatam, okay? Incisional biopsies, yung isang portion lang ang tinitake, Okay, excisional biopsy, tinanggal pati yung surrounding tissue. Okay? Incisional yung isang part lang ang kinuha, binuklat tapos kinuha in nasa loob. Okay? Excisional, tinanggal pati kasama, kasama pati yung surrounding tissue. Okay? There's a difference between incisional and excisional, okay? Incisional may kinuha sa loob. Okay? Parang may umbok kunwari sa noo ni Patrick na naman. Si Patrick ang cadaver natin ngayon class, ha? tandaan nyo. May umbok sa noo ni Patrick ngayon. Okay? Pag cytology, si Segi ang gagamitin natin, okay? Si Segi ang gagamitin natin kasi broma. Kasi mamimiss ko sila Segi kasi ano na eh. Medyo matagal-tagal tayong hindi makikita, di ba Mark? <laughs> Tsaka Patrick. Kaya kayo yung pagtitripan kong dalawa kayo. <laughs> okay? Alright. So, yun. Yun ang pinikaiba. And then we have punch biopsies. Okay? Punch biopsies is gagamit kayo ng cylindrical cutter. 
Okay? And literally from the word itself, parang susuntukin ka. Pero ida drive para siyang ano, para siyang um tamtak. Parang mali kasi liit lang ng tamtak yung gagamitin sa iyo kasi pipisil sa iyo. Then kukuha ng maliit na chunk ng ano mo yun, tas bilog. Okay? Kukuha ng maliit na chunk ng laman mo. Okay? Lymph node biopsy, syempre pag tinanggal yung ano, pag for example may kulani si si Patrick, okay? Tatanggalan siya ng mga kula-kulani kasi and this is guided by a radioactive substance. Okay? So diyan gagamit, diyan diyan papasok yung tinatawag natin na what? Supravital or intravital stains. Ano pinagkaiba ng intravital at saka ng supravital? Or pag sinabi nating vital stain na lang, vital. Oh, ayan. Supravital. Supra, an example of a supravital stain, hematology tayo, hematology review. Reticulocytes, 'di ba? Ibig sabihin kinuha na sa buhay na tao yung buhay na cells. Okay? Sa kami ini-stain yung buhay. Pag sinabi nating vital stain naman, buhay pa yung tao. Pinasukan mo ng dye. Ininjikan mo ng dye through IV. Okay? Clear tayo sa difference, ha? Clear din tayo sa difference ng excisional at saka ng incisional. Ha? Pag tinanong sa case study, ha? Humanda talaga kayo. <laughs> okay? <laughs> endoscope. Endoscopy material, syempre, yan yung may ipapasok sa katawan mo na parang endoscope. Okay? It cannot go one way or the other. It can go to orally. It could go anally. Okay? So it can go to through things. Wag, wag kang humingi si Segi, kalukuhan ka na naman. Segi ko Segi ha. <laughs> okay, Curitage biopsy naman ito yung mga babae na nalaglagan. Kaka, kaka, kakayurin yung lining ng uterus nila para matanggal yung biopsy materials. Mark Segi, nagduty na ba kayo sa histopath? 'Di ba ang pinakamaraming sample is what? Oo, uh, di ba? At saka, an anong tawag usually ng curitage sample? Another term for curitage sample. Products of? POC. POC. Products of conception. Di ba? Minsan may makikita pa kayong nawawalang fetus. Okay? Nakakita na kayo ng fetus? Hindi pa. Buti naman. Mat matino yung mga pasyente sa AFP. Hindi mga ano... Hindi mga kalad ka rin. Okay. Alam nyo naman ako, I'm a good Christian woman. Charet. <laughs> Alright, next slide please. Pinalaki ko din good Christian woman yan si Renmar. Ayoko na ba ano. Ayoko yan ba. Pati si Valiant. Okay? Pinalaki ko yan dalawa na yan as good Christian women. Okay, God-fearing Christian petite women. Petite talaga. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to um, a nice to know question. The most popular trepanning needle for core biopsies is known as your Jamshidi needle. Needle. It was invented in Iran. Okay, the Jamshidi needle. Okay, yeah, na usually ang ginagamit ngayon in most uh, laboratories. This is credit to credit to the University of Leicester and BD. Okay, baka madimonetize tayo, Mark Segi. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yan. The most important feature is the tapering ends to help reduce artifact aspiration. Bakit bakit marireduce yung artifact aspiration? What kind of artifact do you think would be um, included if you collected bone marrow need bone marrow samples from a jam, uh, from a non-jamshidi needle nga. Sa so, tingin niyo, ano bang ini-examine natin? Let's go with uh, let's go with the basics of uh, bone marrow examination. Ano ba tinitingnan muna natin sa bone marrow? Cells, di ba? We, we want to know if it's what? Hypercellular, hypocellular, di ba? We want to know what what the cellular population is, right? Or, or the, if the patient has what? Has um, a pla aplasia, di ba? Gusto nating malaman kung nagpuproduce pa ba yung stem cells. So, ang artifact na makikita mo kung bone marrow aspirate siya, lalabas ito sa mga case, an case analysis ninyo, is, kung hindi diyam shady needle ang ginamit, is, what? Bone marrow, nandun na yung clue. Bones. Kasi, di ba, kaya, kaya, mas, kaya siya maganda pag may tapering ends, kasi, pag mas maliit yung tapering ends, pag humatak ang doktor, 
pag hinatak ng doktor ang ni ang aspirator ay ang plunger ng needle kasi nilalagyan niya ng ano nakita niyo yung puti sa dulo ng purple na yan kinakabit diyan is tatanggalin yan tapos may attachment na ilalagay diyan in, in place of that ang ang nakadikit na diyan is ang ang i-attach diyan is a 10 ml syringe okay so kung walang tapering end ang needle niya makakakuha siya ng bone fragments which will be problematic lalo na kung ang patient is a case of MMM ano na naman yung MMM na ko ko patay tayo nag tanong ng tanong si sir but lahat naka correlate ni sir grabe ka sir Manuel ano yung MMM hematology review tayo hindi niyo binasa yung mga ano ha kayo <laughs> ano yung MMM Myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia. Okay? Yung stem cell sa loob ng bone marrow is fibrous tissue ang ginagawa. Kaya puro buto, buto. Parang puro boy, mga buto-buto na nabubuo. Okay? Myelofibrosis with myeloid metaplasia. Okay? Clear? Clear ba, Renmar? Still a good Christian woman? Alright. Wonderful. nag talaga siya. Oh. Anak ko talaga yan. Alright. Let's move on with the next um, with the next slide. The most common type of endoscopy sample that can be submitted in the histopathology laboratory is, of course, your exploratory uh, your polyps. Okay, polyps. Yung mga kuntil sa loob ng colon man sa mga maliliit na kuntil in Tagalog. Okay, clear. Okay, let's move on. Tingnan natin kung tama ang sagot. Ay. Hindi nasama yung polyps. Saan napunta yung polyps? Polyps yung sagot doon, class, ha? Nawala yung polyps. Pakita muna natin yung question just for video reference. Okay, what is the most common type of endoscopy sample that can be submitted to the histopathology laboratory? That is a polyp. Okay? Polyp. Baka magkamali na spelling ang mga, ta mga student. Isusulat ko na din. Okay? Polyp. Ayan, itatype ko na rin. Polyp. Nandyan sa may ano? Nandyan sa chat box. Okay? Polyps. Okay, so let's go with fresh versus preserved tissue examination. Okay, so mag-examine din tayo ng fresh or preserved. Um, it depends on the institution. Kasi um, meron dyan sa Pilipinas, I, I think mostly dyan sa Pilipinas, ang medtech is nag assist sa gross examination. Um, nung nasa Saudi ako, isa sa, mga, isa sa part ng training namin sa histopath is to do the gross examination. So, isinama ko na lang lahat. Okay? Dito dito naman sa US, merong tao na nag-gross, tapos iba din yung nagpo-process. Yun yung tinatawag na pathology assistant. Okay? Ang trabaho lang nila is mag-gross. Ang nasa harap lang nila lagi, gross talaga ang trabaho nila, literally. Okay? Gross talaga ang trabaho nila. Kasi yung mga nasa mga bags na nare-receive natin or yung mga nasa lalagyan ng na mga nare-receive natin dyan, Mark Segi sa Pilipinas, ang trabaho nila lang is ganun. Kasi konti, na, konti lang kasi ang kumukuha ng pathology. Okay? Ang pathology speciality. Ganun, ganun ka baba ang ano. Kaya nag-open sila ng, ng another profession para lang, para lang ma-compensate yung mga nag-gross. And yun na nga, ang trabaho nila is gumawa ng gross things. Okay? One of their jobs is to do gross analysis. Okay? So, yun yung PA na tinatawag, pathologist's assistant. Okay? So, let's start first with the general procedures that are done in a fresh tissue sample. So, there are three things. They always are they, they are always um, considered stat, by the way. Three things that you need to consider. Actually, ano yan, tatlo lang talaga dapat yan, ha? Walang ano yan. Hindi kasama yung always considered stat. Dapat nandun yan sa taas. Um, let's start. The first thing that you need to do is that remember that it is stat. Okay? There's no fixation required. Okay? An observation is done with either a light or face contrast microscope. Okay? And then immediate staining with a supravital stain or a differentiating dye. When we go to when we go to staining, we'll talk about those types of dyes. But for now, let's just leave it with always consider it a stat. Look at it in the microscope and then immediate stain. Okay? 
bakit kailangan direct and fair, direct agad kasi titingnan natin kung meron kung tama ba talaga yung sample na nakita natin kaya kailangan natin ng face contrast microscope and in the process magdadagdag kayo ng dye while still looking in the microscope scientist na scientist ang datingan ninyo doon class kasi pra, kasi class nandun kayo sa tabi ng may mga OR may mga operating room te- or operating rooms or o um surgical theaters theater as in teatro um may katabing microscope mayroong may ano siya may katabi may naka uh, may nakaupo doon nakaabang lang may kasama siyang microscope at saka stains kasi gusto nilang malaman kung may cancer ba or um pathologic yung isang test okay may mga stains na tayo na ganun ganun naka-advanced yung staining technology ng mga tao ngayon okay all right now what are the two uh, sorry let's go to the next slide <clears throat> so the advantages of examining fresh tissues this include two ty- two things you understand uh, you can uh, you can see the physiological processes directly and it's relatively simple to perform okay so ano ba yung gagawin bakit simple to perform that's the thing that you need to that we need to talk about later on okay um there, there are disadvantages also kung may advantages merong disadvantages okay So that I think is in the next slide. Yeah. All right. So the disadvantages is that there's uh, limited organs can be subjected to fresh tissue examination. Hindi lahat ng organs uh, pwedeng i-examine na. Putrefaction is the main enemy because of course kapag hindi natin finix ang isang sample, anything that you take out of the body, for example, tinanggal natin ang puso ni Patrick ngayon. Okay? The moment na lumawala ng blood supply yan, yung puso ni Patrick, mabubulok yan. Kaya pag sinabi yung putrefaction, hindi ako nagmumura. Ibig sabihin yan, mag-start na yan, mabulok. Okay? Clear? So, putrefaction is basically the production of putresin. Okay? Kaya nga, di ba, ang mura sa Pilipinas, putres ka. Kasi nga, ibig sabihin, bulok ka. Parang ganon. Alright? It came it came from that word, actually. I I I don't know any any more about that. Okay, let's go on to the next uh, slide. So there are several types of or there are several ways where we can examine tissues. You can either dissociate it or this is known as the teasing method. Okay, you can either crush it, you can you can smear it, and look at it through the microscope. You can spread it with um, dissecting needles, or you can pull it apart. By placing it together, uh, by sandwiching it with two slides, and then pulling the slides apart, okay? And then we have touch uh, preps or stamping. Ano naman yung touch preps, sir? Parang nag-stamp ka lang. Uh, nakakita na kayo ng mga stamp ni Hello Kitty dyan sa Pilipinas. Uso pa ba yun? Yung mga, binibig- mga niririgalo sa mga bata na maliliit. Yung pag may mga, yung may mga star siya, yung mga Hello Kitty, ganun. Parang yan, gaganyan ang gagawin ninyo, yung... Ay, ano na lang. For example, nagbayad na kayo ng tuition nyo. Di ba may stamp si ma'am paid? Ganun lang ilalagay. Parang ganun yung gagawin nyo dun sa may ano, sa tissue. Kuha kayo ng ano, kuha kayo ng four step, tapos stamp nyo lang na ganun. Titingnan na natin kung anong, kung may ano. Usually, that's for more on detecting whether or not there's bacteria because you're subject the sample for, to gram stain. Okay? Alright, let's go with teasing. <clears throat> Um, we'll talk about teasing first. Um, teasing, inaasar, hindi. Okay? Walang kalokohan yan, ha? Mark Sege, alam ko meron kang iniisip na kalokohan. Alright? Walang kalokohan yan. Teasing talaga ang tawag siya. Hindi siya niloloko. Okay? What is the disadvantage of teasing and dissociation? So, the process removes the anatomical connection between the cells. Okay? Or tissues. Kasi nga, binubuklat mo eh. Literally, binubuklat mo siya. Okay? So, for example, may part ng, may lymph node ka na gusto mong tingnan, ini-examine mo, na, ay, shucks, natanggal ko na siya dun sa may blood supply niya, hindi ko na alam kung occluded yung blood supply. Ganon. Okay? Kasi nga, meron kang, meron, kang, meron kang maliit na scalpel, tapos may dissecting needle ka, binubuklat mo siya with that one. Okay? So, yun yung main disadvantage niya. You, re- you remove anatomical connections. That's why ang ginagawa pa ang most um, important uh, application of teasing is for what is for yung mga curettage samples lang. Kasi 
kinayod na yun eh. Wala nang anatomical connections talaga yun. Tinitingnan lang natin kung may mga tumor na nagpo-forms. Okay? May mga nagpo-form. So, it doesn't, literally, it doesn't even matter kung naglabo-labo na yung specimen. Pero kung, for example, is ano yan, maliit na tumor yan, na may kailangan malaman kung merong blood, may, merong blood supply, kailangan talaga yung ipadaan yan sa tamang proseso. Okay? Hindi, hindi, hindi pwedeng gamitan ng teasing yan. Okay? Next, we have the uh, crush method and the squash method. Ayan. How are slides stained when this method is used? Usually, they are stained through capillary action. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng capillary action, sir? So, di ba nga in-squash mo siya in between two slides? Hindi mo na pwedeng buklat, buksan yung dalawang slide na yon, Okay? Ang gagawin mo doon is padadaanin mo yung stain doon sa gilid na lang. Okay? So, sir, ilulublob ko ba? Pwede mong ilublob sa stain, pero aantayin mo yung stain na mag-penetrate doon sa, sa pagitan ng dalawang slide. Okay? Clear? Through capillary action lang siya. Kasi, na, kasi nga, ano, dinurog mo yung, dinurog mo basically yung sample in between two slides. Okay? You're sandwiched it. To, to say the least. Okay? The major disadvantage of touch preps naman tayo. I think that's the next one. So we're, that, we're, we're talking about everything that we talk, uh, everything about the types of samples. Okay? So, touch preps naman, since yung front, yung harap lang yung nakikita natin, or yung in-stamp natin, hindi natin makikita kung nasa loob. Kung ano yung nasa loob, di ba? For example, may kinuha tayong maliit na, maliit na kuntil kay, um, Kay Patrick, ang kinuha lang natin is yung inferior portion. Hindi natin siya binuklat, tas saka natin itinatch. Wala tayo, hindi natin makikita yung inner, uh, inner doings nung, or ongoings dun sa loob ng tumor na kinuha, di ba? So, kailangan, buklatin mo din siya, saka mo gawin yung touch prep. Okay? So, pag nakakita kayo ng tissue class, or maliit na tumor, tapos sa kalagay touch prep examination ang nakalagay kahit sa microbiology pa yan buklatin nyo lagi class ha kailangan buklatin nyo siya okay hindi pwedeng yung labas lang kasi malay nyo kung may mikrobyo sa loob di ba tapos yung labas lang yung hindi nyo nakita yung labas lang yung inano ninyo idinikit ninyo dun sa slide okay so clear tayo dyan sa mga touch prep na yan ano pa nga yan um, squashing, teasing, pull apart, and um, stamping. Okay? So, let's move on to something else. Let's go to frozen sections. So, from frozen sections, um, I think there was one question in the board exams that was asked um, way back, uh, I think my, senior, uh, my seniors uh, before me, the people who took the board exam before me, was asked one question. Which of the following automated analyzers, uh, uh, automated uh, tissue processors, can perform frozen sections? Nakalagay doon, tissue tech, auto technicon, and then cryostat, Miller disk. Hindi ko siya makakalimutan kasi yun yun. Kasi parang lumabas siya sa board exam ng kaibigan ko eh. What do you think will be the answer? Tissue Tech, Autotecticon, Cryostat, or Miller Disc? Which of the following can be used for frozen sections? Okay. Everyone answered correctly. Cryostat. From the name itself, frozen nga eh. Cryo, di ba? Tapos stat lagi ang samples. Okay? So, napakadali, di ba? So, sarang dali pala ng histopat. Okay, chill lang kayo. Up to now, maski, maski, kang, maski ngayon siguro pag pinagtest mo ako niyan, mababa ka makukuha ako. Kasi hindi namin alam, hindi namin alam kung saan sila kumukuha ng questions. Okay? Hanggang ngayon. Hanggang ngayon. You can even ask Sir Marco. You can even ask Sir Marco about it. Up to now, hindi alam ng mga tao kung saan sila kumukuha ng questions si mga board examiners. Okay? Sandali lang pala, sir. Siyempre, kung alam mo kung ano ginagawa ng mga yan, auto-technicon, uh, auto basically, siya yung automated tissue processor na carousel-based. Tapos yung tissue tech, siya yung, ano, yung um, fluid-based. 
and then cryostat and Miller disc is not used for histopathology if you if you studied his your hematol the hematology slides that I forwarded to you guys you would know that Miller discs is used for reticulocyte counts diba okay so at least kahit pa paano naka, alam na alam ni Patrick a Arian, Jenilyn at Jeremia and Cielo yung tamang sagot. At makakatulog ako niyan kung itanong man sa kanila 'yon. Kung itanong man sa kanila 'yon, ay, hala hindi ko nasabi, hala dai. Hindi ko nasabi sa kanila, 'di ba? Hindi ako mapapaganon. Makakatulog pa rin ako. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next slide. Why are frozen sections performed? Why do we perform why do uh, surgeons want um one Uh, frozen sections we know that frozen sections are not processed the same way as any surgical samples that come to the laboratory but why are they still performed because 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 it is used for what used when a rapid diagnosis is needed and while a patient is still on the operating table okay so nasa table nasa table ang pasyente kaya nga nakaschedule yan lagi hindi yan yung oy halika dito mel kailangan ka for cryostat, hindi ganun yun ha, hindi ganun yun. Hindi kayo tatawagin on the spot. For example, may operation si, um, usually breast tissue yung, ano ko na ganito eh, yung talagang super malignant na siya. Be, uh, uh, radio, radiology studies say it is malignant and they did an EEG and PET scan on, uh, and everything else. Um, they saw that it is spreading. Okay? So, They scheduled, uh, they scheduled a mastectomy on the patient. Okay? So, they scheduled a mastectomy. Ano yung mastectomy? Tatanggalin yung dede ng pasyente. Okay? So, pag tinanggal yung dede ng pasyente, kukuha na sila ng piece ng sample ng tumor while the patient is on the table and titingnan nila kung dadisectin din nila at tatanggalin din nila yung surrounding lymph nodes. Okay? Based dun sa makikita sa cryostat. Okay? Clear ba tayo, class? Okay, clear tayo. Mamaya magsisend ako ng link kay Moyo. Paki paki ano, paki uh, share sa kung meron man kayong GC diyan. Papakita ko sa inyo kung paano. May YouTube video 'yun about um, frozen sectioning eh. Okay? Now, let's talk about the applications of frozen section. So, frozen section is applied in um, in five areas of um, of laboratory medicine and medicine in general it's the it's for rapid diagnosis or rapid diagnostics uh, enzyme histochemistry okay it's also used for demonstration of lipids immunofluorescence and immunocytochemical stains and special staining techniques for neuropathology okay so for isa din ng example niyan is yung mga open brain surgery okay so for example Um, mga, mga addict na nanonood dito sa Gray's Anatomy, may mga pasyente tayo talaga na mga binu, binubuklat yung ulo sa op- operating room. Kukuha sila ng piece no, tumor galing sa utak or wherever. Then, I think there was one stain that they mentioned that I knew I know of. They can, if it stains blue, it means that it's cancerous. And if it stains green, it, mean, it, it means that they can continue the dissection. Ganun yung ginagawa. Dissection means um, cutting. Okay? So when I when you hear the, when you hear me say the word dissection, it means cutting um, or surgically cutting something from the patient. Okay? So yun yung mga applications niya. Kaya tanyo napakaganda ng napakaganda actually ng ano ng ng histopath. Okay? Kailangan ko lang palang umalis ng Pilipinas para lang ma-experience. <laughs> Kasi just sa Pilipinas, kailangan super tanda ka na para mag Kasi yung trabaho dyan, hindi toxic. Di ba, Mark? Nagkakapi lang yung mga intern sa, ano, sa histopat. Ang trabaho lang ng intern, magdala ng paperwork. Kung masabing magsulat ka, magsulat ka, di ba? Chill kasi yan nandiyan sa Pilipinas. Usually yung mga bata, yung mga mga bata yung inaha i, i pino frontline nila dun sa other sections. Tapos pag medyo mga around 60s ka na or 50s, chill ka, chill na ang buhay mo niya. Hindi ka na pwedeng ma-stress. Sa istupat ka na dapat, 'di ba? Ganun ganun yung ano diyan life cycle of a medtech diyan sa Pilipinas eh. <laughs> okay? All right. So, 
let's go to the next slide. Um, what are the methods of preparing frozen section? You could either use the cold knife method, okay, that which is more traditional, or right now the most popular is the cryostat method. So basically, cryostat method is a um a sophisticated form of cold knife method method, wherein there is a microtome inside with a lot of material used for rapid embedding of the sample. Okay? So, yun lang yung pinagkaiba nilang dalawa. Alright? Cold knife method. Uh, we'll talk about the cold knife method. So, the cold knife method, you, um, all you need to remember is the tissue temperature. Um, the temperature inside the mic, uh, in the, uh, to the mic, in the, for, of the microtome rather, of the microtome knife and the environment okay so malamig talaga siya and i think even sa or malamig talaga lahat ng or okay so tissue should be tissue should be um chilled to a temperature of 5 degrees centigrade to negative 5 degrees centigrade yan yung mga dapat yung tandaang numbers okay the microtome knife needs to be cold as well if it's if it's above uh, the, those two temperatures negative 40 to negative um negative 40 to negative 60 degrees celsius the tissue would be macerated magmumukhang magmumukhang pulp okay madudurog okay kaya kailangan yung knife at tissue chilled din dapat sila and the environment in order to avoid ambient uh, temperature changes needs to be maintained at these temperatures okay so cryostat, uh, cryostat eliminated the need for that one and it only needed the cryostat cabinet temperature monitoring which is the next slide i think let's see nga mo yeah okay so the uh, so the cryostat cabinet needs to be just maintained at the temperature of negative 18 to negative 20 degrees celsius ano ba yung cryostat cabinet na yan sir mamaya papakita ko sa inyo yung picture niyan okay all right now we have we use chemicals to freeze tissues when we're performing frozen sections. We can use any of the following: liquid nitrogen, isopentane, cooled by liquid nitrogen as well, or you can use CO2 gas or, or aerosol sprays. Okay, the most popular is liquid nitrogen because that's the most uh, that's the cheapest and economical. Okay, but um, the books that I read, um, CO2 gas and aerosol sprays. They are best for um, centers uh, like um, surgical cancer centers that uh, cancer centers that require constant usage of the cryostat. Okay, so yung madami ang samples, kasi hindi ka naman pwedeng kuha ng kuha ng liquid nitrogen. Kailangan mo ng ref niyan. So yung CO2 gas at yung aerosol spray nakalagay lang yan sa parang lata. Okay, nakalagay lang yan lat sa lata. Kaya kung madami kayong sample, isprayan nyo lang ng mga ano, isprayan nyo lang ng gas, tapos na ang problema. Kasi si liquid nitrogen, kailangan pa ng storage na um, different. Kaya yun yung, yun yung nabasa ko na advantage ng aerosol gas, ay ng aerosol sprays at saka ng CO2 gas. Okay? Now, let's talk, let's talk about um, tissue processing as an, over, an overview. Um, the initial steps to um, tissue processing we have to first start with the most important that is known as specimen identification and accessioning and of course gross examination and sampling okay so anong ginagawa in each um, identification and accessioning basically if it came from patrick it has to come it has to be in the form also kung lis yan dapat parehas yung barcode okay kailangan na receive siya sa barcode okay yun lang yun okay kailangan may um Mas masara, mas masaya ang buhay sana kung may accession number lahat ng ano na automatic. Pero when I was working in the Philippines, one of my job as one of my job or my my um, designations as a medical laboratory intern was to accession the samples. So kasama na din yon yung kukuha kami ng logbook, lalagyan namin ng 101H pag istupat <laughs> and then taon and then ilalagay mo kung pang ilan siyang sample of the day. So kayo yung depende kung ano ang numbering ang numbering scheme ng hospital ninyo. Okay? Uh, 
lab management wise i think it's subject to clerical errors but but it has a personal touch to it alam ninyo kung sino yung maraming magkakamali yun yung ano yun yung yun yung advantage naman ng ano ng manual accessioning sa barcoding naman pag namatay ang ano pag namatay ang kuryente patay ang lahat di ba yun lang naman yung disadvantage niya okay so gross examination ano naman ginagawa sa gross examination Sino na nag-intern dito? Anong ginagawa sa gross examination? Gross examination, may katabi kayong pathologist, a board certified pathologist, or a resident, kasi siya yung MD na nagtitrain to become to specialize into pathology. And what you do is you measure, you do gross examination, what does it look like? What are the insides look like? Does it have tumors? Or the, is it enlarged? Is it inflamed? Okay? So those are the things that they do in gross examination. Okay? Measurements and physical characteristics are noted. Okay? Nice to know who performs gross examinations. So let's go to the next slide. So anatomic pathologist is the one that does it or anatomic pathology resident. In other countries like the US and the Middle East, this part is done by trained laboratory personnel other than a pathologist. Um, yun nga yung sinasabi ko. Um, sa US, meron tayong tinatawag na pathology assistants. Sa ibang bansa like um, Australia and um, I think in I think in Europe, they have senior histotechnicians. And I think that's the same also in the Middle East. They have senior technici- histotechnicians. Yung sobrang galing na nila at sobrang tagal na nila sa trabaho, pinapabayaan na sila ng doktor na mag gross examination. Okay? So, ang ginagawa, basically, ang end product ng gross examination is a tissue cassette. Familiar kayo sa tissue cassette? Alam yung itsura ng tissue cassette? Okay. So, I don't need to talk about that anymore. Alright. Let's move on to the next slide. Pag familiar si Mel, familiar si, ano, si Bai at saka si Patrick, gora na ako with the next topic. Okay. What is done during cross uh, during grossing? I've said that already. Macroscopic examination of the specimen. You do measurements including t- color, texture, presence and absence of clots, and other remarkable findings such as whether or not it's friable or there is the presence of stones. Okay, clear. All right. Let's move on to the next one. So after grossing, um, the pathologist places uh, the, uh, the pathologist places the dis- dissected organ or tissue in a tissue cassette and it looks like this can you show it to them there you go that is from fintech usa the sakura com- uh, sakura company they're the ones who produce it but there are other companies who do that but for the purpose of this lecture that's the one that's the clearest one that i have okay um there there are sizes depending on whether or not it's a cyto- it's a cytology sample or a endoscopy sample but this is this one is used mainly for large samples or medium to large sized samples okay anything that's uh, larger than four millimeters okay next this is the term used for organized cutting and dissection of a tissue and organ or an organ this has been coined as bread loafing kung paano nyo hiwain yung tinapay nyo na minsan may mga may, minsan alam ko may mga minamalas pag bumili na ng tasty sa pan, sa panaderia kailangan yung hatiin ng ganyan kasi hindi na hindi na section ay hindi na bread loaf okay so ganyan siya it's called as bread loafing kaya, kaya ganyan namalas ka na, 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 na nabudol ka na ng ganon Patrick yung sabi tasty bread daw from ano from Julie's Bake Shop expected ko magpapahid na lang ako ng mayonnaise at, at <laughs> <laughs> diba? Expected ko magpapahid na lang ako ng palaman. Nabudol ako. Kailangan ko pa palang maghiwa. Playing with my time. <laughs> I'm a busy Christian woman. <laughs> okay? Alright. Now, let's go to the actual tissue processing. Uh, the actual tissue process. Okay? So, the steps involved in tissue processing... Huwag niyo kakalimutan yung sinabi sa akin ng aking teacher, ay ng aking professor since I was a student. Hindi ko siya nakakalimutan hanggang ngayon. Bibigyan ko na kayo ng mnemonic. F deceit. Talaga sir, meron ka kayo. F deceit. Di ba? 
F deceit, ganyan lang siya. Okay? Deceit, SSM. O, yun. F deceit, SSM. Ano yung ibig sabihin niyan? Fixation, dehydration, clearing, infiltration or impregnation, embedding, trimming, sectioning, staining, and mounting. O, ba diba? F deceit, SSM. Alright? Ano yung SSM, sir? Kayo nang bahala kung ano nun dyan. Binigay ko na sa inyo lahat, eh. Okay? Um, special specialist special specialist in mounting o oh, ayan na para ano meron na kayong mnemonic hindi ko alam kung maaalala nyo pero at least sana wag nyo makakalimutan si FD seat okay FD seat hindi ko makalimutan yan hanggang ngayon all right now we'll start first with the discussion on fixation okay so um, we have a we have a separate uh, discussion for fixation but for the purpose for this purpose of introduction our may um we'll, we'll give you i'll give you guys an overview of this so there are three things that we want when we uh we want to preserve we want to fix a sample we want to harden the sample so that we can cut it okay we want to preserve the sample so that we can see what is going on within the tissue and we want to stop autolysis okay so we want to stop autolysis kasi bakit sir Bakit magkaiba ba yung preservation and stopping autolysis? Yes, preserving basically means that there is a structure for you to cut. Okay? Stopping autolysis is seeing what's inside the cells when you stain it. Okay? So that's the reason why it was separated. Even in, in, in any book that you read, BOC manuals, Gregorios, laging ganyan yung definition niya. We want to harden it, gusto natin patigasin. We want to preserve it para long-lasting siya. And then we want to stop the autolysis so that we can see what is inside. Okay? We want to see what is inside. Alright? Or para hindi siya mabulok. Okay? Now, let's talk about dehydration. Dehydration, the action is performed during this... Uh, what action is performed during this step? We want to increase the... Uh, the what? Uh, the We want to immerse the sample in a dehydrating... Uh, in increasing strengths of dehydrating agent. Okay? Usually in a form of an alcohol. Okay? 95%. Uh, usually it starts at 70%, pataas ng pataas, hanggang maging 100%. Okay? Um, and by this way, you want to remove the water and fixative from the tissue. Okay? So that's the reason why we want to dehydrate a sample. Alright? Next is clearing. Okay? Clearing, the main purpose of clearing is to make the sample transparent. Hence the term clearing, clear. Okay? And we want to remove the alcohol that was used in the dehydration step because these alcohols can interfere with the staining. Okay? So that, those are the things that you need to remember. Masyado bang mabilis, Mel? Or kaya naman sa pacing? Carry lang. What about for you, bye? Carry lang sa'yo. Hindi masyadong mabilis, okay lang. What about for Ren, Mark, and Lass? Carry lang. Okay. Okay, baka mamaya kasi hindi, baka mamaya kasi hindi kayanin ni, Ma, ni Moyo yung, bili, yung speed eh. Kasi madami tayong babasa, madami tayong anuhin ngayon, dadaanan na ano, na PowerPoint presentation, skala ninyo. Okay? May lab management pa tayo kasi tinatanong na din daw yan, sabi ni Sir Marco eh. Kaya isinama ko na. Naalala mo pa, Renmar, kung ano yung shortcut natin ng tissue processing after grossing? Oh, okay. At least alam niya. Alright. Um, shout out kay, Edis, kay Professor Edison Ramos. Um, ano nga yun? Ano nga ano niya? DSMT, MSPH, MSMT. Um, isa siya sa mga dear professors ko from... Um, National University na ata siya ngayon, hindi na siya sa Arellano. Siya na ang dean at saka ang pamet ano, pamet head ng ano ng Bulacan chapter. Hindi ko alam kung siya pa rin ngayon. Kasi matagal na ako hindi umuwi ng Pilipinas eh. Anyways, let's see the answer. Uh, let's see the next slide. Okay? Oh uh, yeah. All right, the reagent that is uh, clearing. The reagent in this step needs to be miscible with what? What do you mean by miscible? Who knows the meaning of the word miscible? Ooh, Patrick. Ayon, pwede din yon or nagahalo. Yes, very good. 
na dissolve or na mix that's also the cor that's uh, that's correct so the reagent in this step needs to be miscible with or kailangan naghalo siya with what with the infiltrating agent or the impregnating agent okay in in which case ano ang ginagamit usually na infiltrating agent if you guys still remember your histopathology parang hindi masyad, parang na, na, nabuboard si Moyo wala siyang ibang magawa kundi mag flip lang ng slides eh magtatanong tayo para maglalagay ka din ng points ngayon Moyo sige hindi ako nagtatanong eh what's the most popular infiltrating agent mel very good o palagyan ng point, points nga yan si mel Paraffin wax. Parang wala yung mga main characters natin. Nasaan na si Dexter? Yung iba nating main characters. Nawawala yung iba nating main characters. Nasa nasaan si Dexter? Dexter, mag magsalita ka nga, Dexter. Ay, ayan, ayan, ayan. Nakita ko. Bakit nakatago kayo ngayon lahat? Ha? Akala ko ba may usapan kayo ni Sir Marco? Lahat kayo. Dapat nagpapakita kayo sa camera. Kayo ha? Baka bumula na naman yung bunganga ng professor ng dean ninyo. Kayo talaga, pinapainit yung ulo niya. <laughs> okay. Ayan, bigla nagpakita si Hana. <laughs> bigla nagpakita si Hana. Ang sarap-sarap ng buhay natin, ang Christmas natin, masaya class eh. Kayo naman, ha? May pa-project pa pala ako sa inyo mamaya, class. Paano ba yan? Kailangan, ang, ang deadline ng pa-project ko sa inyo, may... Titingnan ko pa kung papayag si Sir Marco kung magpapa-plus pero pag ako automatically meron ako ano meron ako meron ako ibibigay na ano na premyo. Okay? Mga ngaruling kayo sa amin as a group. <laughs> Every year may mga ganyan kami ni Sir Marco kasi alam namin hindi kayo maaano. Hindi kayo makakapasa kung walang plus. Kayo talaga. <laughs> Kayo talaga. Charing lang. Mahal na mahal namin kayo, class. Ano ba? Okay, let's go to the... Mo ako, maybe ako lang. Si Sir Marco, numiinit na yung ulo niya sa inyo. Mabula na yung bunga nga sa inyo. Alright, so next slide na tayo. Another term for embedding is also known as what? Blocking or casting. Okay? Hindi ko na yun nilagyan ng next ano, ng answer. Dapat alam ninyo yan, class. Kasi in other books... And other books, ang gamit nila is molding, blocking, casting. Ang gamit nila, okay? So, dapat alam nyo siya. Alright? Hindi ko na yun bilagyan ng sagot. Okay? Next. Uh, what is the widely used impregnating agent or infiltration agent? Ano ba yung ibig sabihin niyan Sir, bakit ba lagi mo na sinasabi yung infiltrating at impregnating na yan? Actually, ayaw ko siyang gamitin yung impregnating na yan. Kaya laging infiltration ang ginagamit ko. Kasi, ang tsaka, ayaw kong gamitin yan. Ano ba, ano ba yan, sir? Kasi, ang ginagawa dyan, ang nangyayari kasi dyan is, for example, you have a cleared sample. You have a cleared sample na, right? ba diba? Under, Nag-undergo na siya ng clearing with, um, with silene, right? What you want the what you want the paraffin wax to do is to go inside it. Okay? Kaya ayoko siya kasi baka ma-demonetize tayo yung segi. Okay? Ayoko kung ginagamit yung impregnating term na yan. Infiltrating siya kasi ipapasok lang natin sa loob yung paraffin wax. Okay? Yung paraffin wax lang ha. Ngumingi si ka na naman Mark Segi, puro kalokohan na naman yung pumapasok sa isip mo. Pag kalokohan talaga na naiisip niya na na, na nalolo ka ang anak ko na ano Christian woman. Ha? Okay, wag mo din wag mo din dinudungisan ng innocence ni Mel at saka ni Dexter. Okay? Wag mo wag mo dinudungisan ikaw talaga Mark Segi ha. Puro kakalokohan. Okay. So, what is the widely used impregnating agent or infiltrating agent? We've already said that or it's paraffin or paraffin wax. Okay? Paraffin or paraffin wax. Saan ba siya gawa? Kandila. Okay? Ang mga interns ng histopath namin doon sa Saudi, pupunta sila doon sa sa, sa laborator sa histopath section. Ilulublub lang nila yung kamay nila doon sa ano, sa paraffin bat. Mga luka-luka. Hindi nila alam may silin 'yon. Tinanong ko kung tinanong ko bakit nila nilulublub pang spa daw. Kasi nakakapagpalambot kasi siya ng ano, nakakapagpalambot kasi siya ng kamay. Sabi ko, sa isip-isip ko lang bahala kayo yung pagkayo nagka-cancer. 
Paano kayo dyan? Kasi may ano, yung galing kasi yun sa tissue, sa uh, tissue tech. Eh medyo malambot-lambot na yun. Nagigrayish na siya. Plus. So, pag malambot-lambot na siya, yun daw yung magandang temperature. Sabi ko, kaya lumalambot ang kamay ninyo dahil may silin yan. Kaya <laughs> talaga, nakakaloka yung mga, nakakaloka yung mga Saudi, ano namin, mga Saudi interns namin. Mga kung ano-ano, mga kalokohan ng ano. Feeling ko magiging barkada sila ni Patrick at saka ni ano, ni Mark Segi. Puro mga kalokohan din yung alam. Alright? Alright, let's move on to the next slide. Okay? Paraffin in a liquid in liquid form is usable in histopathologic procedures at what temperature? 50 to 60 degrees. Actually, if we go specific to uh, if we go to the specifics of that one, that's just a range, okay? But if you really want to go deep, if you if you want to delve deeper into it, it's actually 54 degrees Celsius to 58 degrees Celsius, okay? But the reason why I put it here is because there's a range, okay? Because there are some impregnating agents that are paraffin based. Okay? They're not purely paraffin. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next one. Okay? Ah, yun, dyan pala napunta yung blocking or casting. Mo yung pakiayos yan mamaya. <laughs> Nandun pala yung ano. Nawala yung blocking or casting natin. May question dyan na walang ano. Dinilit ko yan actually. Hindi ko alam na napunta dyan. Alright, let's move to the next one. Pakilagay siya dun sa baba nung ano. Okay? What important step must be taken into consideration when embedding a specimen? You need to remember the orientation. Kailangan naka-orient siya. Okay? Pag nilagay ng doktor na nakapababa, kitang-kita ang tumor, huwag niyong itatalikod. Okay? Huwag na huwag niyong itatalikod. Kasi baka mabis-diagnose ni doktor, mabis-diagnose ni Duki na wala palang kanser. Pag, pin, pag, gina, pag tinaob pala, ay, nandun pala yung kanser. Okay? Huwag na huwag ninyong babalik ta rin, class, ha? pag nagtrabaho man kayo sa histopath. Okay? Meron akong katrabaho na ganyan. Ala, wala na. Lumaki na nang lumaki ang tumor. Yung pagbalik na, yung pangalawang balik ng pasyente, ayun na. Hindi na kailangan, hindi na kailangan itaob yung tissue. Kasi sa sobrang laki na ng tumor, naging ka, nagkumalat na. Okay? Huwag na huwag niyo yung babalik ta rin. Kaya iba ang, iba ang responsibilidad talaga ng histopathologist at saka ng histotechnologist. Okay? They have to be good partners. Okay? Pag nagkamali, always refer to your histopathologist, okay? Or your anatomic pathologist. Hindi hindi pwede yung, ay, naku, baka magalit sa akin si doktor. Okay? Walang ganun na. Kailangan honest. Kung baga, pagka, may, with my kapampangan accent. Honest dapat kayo, class na honest. Okay? Kahit hindi ako kapampangan. Alright? Okay, let's move on to the next, um, the next thing. Okay? Sectioning. What instrument is used when we're doing sectioning? Sino pa bang nakakaalala ng, sam ng histopath nila? What instrument do we use? We only use one spell instrument, but it could have different variations. I'm only asking the general term for what we are using in sectioning. Ay, walang nag-grace ng kamay. Si Patrick lang talaga, ang student ko dito. Tama ba yan? O, sige Patrick. O, very good. Pakita nga natin kung tama. Mali pala siya, no? Katam, sir. <laughs> katam, katam, sir. <laughs> Siyari, mali pala yung sagot niya. Katam pala. No? Tinagalog ko pala. Hindi. Microtome class. Okay? It's a microtome. So, the microtome has three parts. Alam na ninyo yan dapat. Okay? Kasi yan yung mga tinatanong sa board exam. Pero sa kanin natin yun pag-usapan. Okay? Conventional microtomes can cut as, as small as um, five micrometers. Um, if you're using a microtome specifically designed for um for electron microscopy you have to use an ultra thin microtome that has smaller uh that has a thinner size that uh, um, than five micrometers okay so anything else greater than uh, greater than five usually it's not uh, usually it's um rotary sliding microtome or the um rotational microtome okay so union Alright, next. 5 micra. Yun yung dapat yung tandaan for this one. Okay, next. This media is used to, st uh, to stain slides to allow better visualization and prolonged usage of the slide. So, for example, tapos na kayo. Tapos na ang pag-process ninyo ng sample. Nandun, na-stain nyo na din ang sample. What then do you add? You add a mounting medium. Okay? 
you add a mounting medium or a mounting media and it should it could uh, it can be an aqua aqueous or a resinous um, mounting media and then we're uh, and of course we're gonna talk about that after um, after our next uh, uh, after this uh, discussion um, in the subsequent discussions I mean all right next we have to talk about the advances in histotechnology. Quite recent lang to, di ba? Bagong dagdag lang namin to. Okay? So, la napakalaki ninyo class. Okay? Um, kasi tinatanong na din siya sa board exams. Kasi may mga consultants sa kasi tayo from different countries. And nagpapakonsult na din yung ibang mga doctors natin dyan sa Pilipinas from other countries. So, I think the most important thing to ask is of course about the next slide. Pakita nga natin yung next slide. This is a new way of consulting anatomic pathologists from long distances using soft copies of the specimen. Okay? Dapat ang mga, ang, ang mga microscopes natin ay mayroong camera na. Okay? Hindi na pwede yung light microscope na nandyan sa Pilipinas. Ngayon, ang gamit na ng mga microscope sa ibang bansa ay may camera na. May video na nga din yung iba eh for teaching purposes. Okay? May, okay? So, what is that? Uh, a new way of consulting anatomic pathologists from long distances. May work from home na ang mga anatomic pathologists. Did, did, you, know, did you know that class? This was, um, this was emphasized um, um, way back in the year, uh, specifically uh, way back in year 2020 when the pandemic started. Hindi makalabas yung mga pathologists. This is known as digital pathology. Okay. Bayad pa rin sila with the same rates, pero work from home. Di ba kaya ang saya maging pathologist pala, no? Kasi work from home na sila. Pero hoy, hindi lang basta-basta pathologist yan, class. Kailangan mag-establish ka din ng practice mo. Parang ano din yan, parang pagiging derma lang din yan, or cardio. Kailangan alam nila na magaling ka. Okay. So, kailangan magaling kayo na pathologist pa rin. Hindi naman sila basta-basta mag-hire ng services mo kung hindi ka naman magaling, di ba? Sino ba naman ang bibili ng... Sino ba naman ang gustong bumili ng damit sa... sa Divisoria na nasanay siya ng binibili niya eh Calvin Klein, di ba? O kaya mga ano, Larf Role, Loren. And then bibili ng damit sa Divisoria, di ba? Parang ganun lang din yon pag namili ka ng... ng consultant mo, di ba? Okay? Alright. Next. Next one is the usage of probes to detect diseases on the DNA and RNA level using only a piece of tissue sample. This is known as molecular pathology. Okay? Molecular pathology. I think it's been since the 90s. 90s pa yan. Pero ngayon lang siya naging emphasis. Nagkaroon lang din siya ng emphasis um, this year, uh, the, uh, recently because of the COVID pandemic because ka kasi nga, di ba class nagkaroon na tayo ng mRNA technology do you guys still, do you still understand your mRNA technology? class madaming, it, it opened up a lot of doors, class um, anyways, let's move on from that and let's go with the other one, rapid diagnosis of disease using signaling proteins that is attached to cells or free flowing in tissue circulation this is known as tissue biomarkers or tumor biomarkers okay and i think that is um, uh, the importance of that is emphasized in your clinical chemistry 3 when you talk about uh, tumor marker technology okay so i'm not going to delve deeper into that but let's talk about the histopathology the histolab workforce or the histopathology lab workforce okay now in the philippines okay because you guys will be working in the Philippines first, before I see you here, okay? You will be, what? You will be required to get a license. Oh, next slide, please. So in the Philippines, the minimum, uh, the minimum requirement to perform the job of a histotechnologist is an RMT or a PRC passer for um, Philippine graduates. In the U.S., you just need to be certified by the ASCP, okay? All right. You could either get two types of uh, you could get two types of certification: histotechnician or histopathology, uh, histotechnologist. Iba yung histotechnician and histotechnologist. Okay, iba yung designations nila. Okay, there might there may um next. Uh, 
why did I include this? Because it's part of the curriculum there in, uh, when I attended the class. Kaya nga, mas nauna yung MTL natin kasi gusto kong tapusin yung class na tinitake ko sa ano, yung, sina, yung pinag-sit-inan ko. What's the difference between histotechnologist and uh, histotechnician? Um, histotechnicians, they are the ones who do mostly the pre-analytic and post-analytic work, while the histotechnologist, they're, they're doing the tissue processing. Okay? Clear? Clear ba tayo? They may assist in some of the tissue processing, but ultimately, the end product needs to be given to the pathologist by a histotechnologist. Okay? Clear? Clear ba tayo? Okay. Now, what, do, what does a pathology assistant do in most U.S. clinical setting? Gross examination of specimens and post-mortem examinations under the supervision of a pathologist. So, under sila lagi ng pathologist. We've already discussed that. Okay? Now, let's talk about the most important things that might be asked in your board exam. Okay? Pinadaanan lang natin yung lamang kwento yun. Okay? Okay? So, automation muna tayo. Automation. What, uh, what is a tissue processor? I think that's the first question. Right. Okay? So, a tissue processor is a machine that processes tissues slash tissue cassettes automatically without manual handling on the part of the technologist. Okay? So, Mark Segi, nagta-transfer ka pa ba nung nagpunta ka sa, na, nung nag-histopat ka? Hindi na, ba? May machine kayo doon. Anong machine ang gamit ninyo? Yung may carousel? Ah, 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 ah. Okay, so that... Minamanual na mga intern or ng staff? Intern yan. <laughs> okay, so yon manual methodology is what uh, what Mark Segi told you. But if you're going to use, if you're going to use a tissue processor, it will automatically do everything. It's been pre-programmed. Okay, it's already been pre-programmed. Some are sophisticated enough to un to know when to change the reagents. Okay, may mga spectrophotometers dun sa loob para malaman ay masyado ng cloudy. Paltan mo na yung silene. Ganon. May mga, may mga spectrophotometer sa loob yung iba. Okay? So, hindi lang siya yung ano. Ah. Di ba yung Mark Segi sa inyo parang drum lang na umiikot-ikot? Or may hook sa taas? Ay, may parang hook na, may hook na nakakabit sa uh, container na malaki? Oh, yan. Mm -mm. Ah, yeah. Auto-technicon ang tawag doon. Okay? So that is uh, tissue processor class, okay? So it limits your what what are the advantages of using that one? First of all, wala tayo hindi tayo mamo-problema sa mga overfixation, overhydration na 'yan, 'di ba? Hindi natin mapo-problema 'yon. Second of all, syempre protektado ang mga katulad ni Patrick, 'di ba? Kaya nga siya ang kad cadaver natin ngayon kasi nga pinanganak siya sa panahon na manual lahat. Charing lang. Charing lang. Theoretical ano ka lang, patient ka lang natin. Ha? <laughs> okay? Kasi may rapor na tayo, Patrick. Eh. Pwede na kitang etos etos in. Okay? Clear? Okay. So, um, let's talk about... Um, ay, tara nag nagsend ang picture sa akin si Mark Segi. Hoy, wag yung puro kalokohan niya na baka mamaya puro kalokohan. Mm, Nako. Ah, okay. Or, ay, social naman pala sa, sa AFP yan. Social naman pala. Hindi siya carousel. Yung linear ano siya. Diba? Buong kayo sa kanyo. Mamaya share ko sa inyo, class. Okay? Share ko sa inyo yung sinend sa akin ni Segi. Okay? So, pag linear, nakahilera siya. Pag carousel, para siya. Alam niyo yung pag sumakay kayo na merry-go-round. Yung may kabayo. Ah, yun. Yun. So, parang may bilog. Pabilog yung isa. Pabilog yung isa. Yung kalasegi, palinya. Parang, ano siya, parang kabaong yung itsura. Pero may nakalinya na mga ano. Histopat nga eh, kasi kabaong talaga eh. Alright? Anyways, let's go with the two types of tissue processors. So, there are two types sa class. Kung sa, histopat, kung sa clinical chemistry, may tinatawag tayo mga random access na ganyan na mga chemer root. Meron din sa histopat. Okay? Sa so, histopat, may tinatawag tayong tissue transfer processor. So, pag sinabing tissue transfer processor, yung tissue yung gumagalaw. Okay? Yung tissue ang gumagalaw. Pag sinabi naman natin, fluid transfer processor, merong drain, merong containment unit, tapos merong drain lang na lumalap. Tapos dinidrain lang yung mga chemicals and reagents. Okay? Clear? 
So the tissue remains in one spot in the processor. Uh, uh, it is the machine. It is the machine that changes the chemicals at scheduled intervals, di ba? So nasa isang spot lang siya. Hindi katulad sa ano? Hindi katulad sa tissue transfer processor. Na katulad nga na siya sabi ni Mark Segi kanina. Yung ginagalaw siya per yung may automatic na robot hand na nagtataas baba doon sa bawat chemicals. Why? Kasi nakita ng mga ano? Nakita ng mga Um, scientists na mas prone to contamination siya kasi di ba magtatalsik-talsikan yung ano di ba kasi nga liquids yung pinoprocess mo di ba at saka ang isa pang danger non is yung pagkalat ng mga aerosols lalo na kung ang ginagamit silene o kaya pagka, pagka clearing agent pa is toluene or benzene di ba kasi may mga may mga organs na kailangan ganun ang gamitin natin eh okay all right all right let's move on to the next um uh, the next slide Most automated tissue processors end the tissue processing step up to Mark Segi. Hanggang saan siya natatapos? Anong next mong gagawin pagka numabas na dun sa machine na yun? Or anong next na ginagawa ng staff mo paglabas dun sa machine? Hoy, ini-slice na ka agad? Hoy, i-embed mo pa lang. Ikaw talaga. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so it ends at the infiltration step. Okay? So it always ends at the infiltration step. Wala pa akong nakitang machine na siya na mag embed tapos nakalabas yung mga bloke class ha. So since the sample need to be positioned, kasi nga yung mga position niyan iba-iba. Imagine mo pinatuyo mo yung paraffin. May paraffin sa loob ng tissue processor, pero natuyo yung paraffin. Hindi parang meron kang malaking kandila. Para kang bumili ng kandila sa Bat and Body Works. Ganto kalaki ang ganto kalaki ang sample mo. Okay? Nakikita niyo ako. Ganun ang ginawa niyo kung natuyo. Nagawa niyo naman yung buong histopathologic processes, pero hindi nga lang tama. <laughs> okay? So pwede bang pwede ba nating ayusin 'yon, Mark Segi, sa tingin mo kung ganun na nangyari? For example, namatay yung kuryente. Tapos ano? Tapos natuyo yung, ay na lumamig yung paraffin in the in, during the infiltration step. Pwede pa natin maremedyohan yun o sira na yung lahat ng batch natin. Natapo na ba lahat yun? Okay, anong gagawin nyo dun? That is part of troubleshooting. That is also a question in the, board, in the exams. Very good. Okay, so tatandaan ninyo sa, pro, sa exams ninyo. Minsan kailangan nyo gumamit, lalo na dito sa histopath ha. Kailangan alam niyo yung ginagawa ninyo kasi ang mga questions minsan common sense. Okay? Minsan yung mga questions common sense. Pag tinanong kayo, pag tinanong kayo how can you test if the, if there is uh, there's no reagent no reagent is present. Pag binigyan kayo ng case analysis na there's no reagent um, available to test for decalcify decalcification. How then could the technologist see if the sample is in is if the sample is soft enough? Sige nga, paano? Gagamit kayo ng common sense class. Sige. For example, ginagawa ang gina, gina, we do decalcification when the samples are brittle or are, are hard, right? Bones, teeth and everything. How then would the technologist know if decalcification is complete if there is no reagent uh, if there's no supply of um, reagents present? Common sense class na question siya. Ano gagawin niyo? Pipisilin nyo. ba? Diba? <laughs> May mga question na ganun class. Pipisilin nyo. Naka-encounter ako ng ganun na question. You pinch the sample to see if it's soft enough for microtomy. Okay? So sometimes you have to know what you're doing. Alright? Kasi hindi nyo, siya maka- hindi nyo siya makikita dito sa mga ganito. Hindi siya itatanong na uh, the, sample sabi- the sample right now came out of the machine uh, infiltrated. Mga ganon, no, wala mga ganon na question. Ang itatanong sa inyo sa board exam, lalo na dyan sa Pilipinas, is mostly common sense kapag ka, pagka board exam, okay? Kasi may mga ganon mga, ha? Huh? That's a silly question. Buti na lang alam ko ginagawa ko. Bright Jude kaya ako, di ba? Renmar. <laughs> Buti na lang inaalam ko good. Bright Jude tayo, di ba, anak? Umuo ka pag hindi babagsak ka dito bibigyan ka ng ano. Umuo ka. <laughs> Tinakot. Pin- pinagbantaan. Pinagbantaan din. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay. Um 
what are the uh, what are other tissue processes can be automated in the hist in histopathology labs? Um, you may not uh, you may not have noticed it because most of the labs in the Philippines don't section their samples automatically, but it can be sectioned automatically, class. Okay. Um, may mga techno uh, may mga machine tayo like the Sakura Tech. Uh, it's made in Japan. You may ano siya? Um, ilalagay mo lang yung tissue block. Siya na yung mag-aayos ng angle, ng angles. Tapos press mo lang yung trim. Iti-trim na niya, i-expose na niya yung side. May mga lasers na yon. And then after that, you go with make tissue ribbon. You you press the you press tissue ribbon and then it will make five ribbons perfectly cut ribbons for you. Okay? I've seen that I think um I think in the Arab Health uh, Summit it was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. And they were doing it with actual specimens. That's why sabi ko, asusyal. Tapos, automatic na, din, um, automatic na din ang staining class. Okay? Meron na din tayong automatic mounting pa actually. Medyo luma na yung libro na pinagkukuhanan ko. Kasi dito sa lab namin, last week nag-tour ako ng histopath. Nagpunta ako sa histopath. Sabi nila, ang mounting, ano nila, ang mounting process nila is also automated na din pala. What's mounting ba class? Yung pinuputok ninyo yung bubbles. <laughs> okay? Di ba Patrick? Ganun ang ginagawa ninyo. Pinalalabas niyo yung bubbles. <laughs> kasi, kasi manual din yung igaganyan yung, yung resin, di ba? <laughs> okay? Manual yung ipapahid. Okay? Alright, class. Um, I think uh, that is it for the introduction of um, histopathology. We can go to the first process, which is fixation. After fixation, after we discussed fixation, we discussed fixation. We're going to have a short break. Okay. Okay, magalala. We'll discuss everything before I go to New York. Okay. So hindi kayo makakaan. Hindi kayo may hindi kayo hindi kayo malili mali left out sa exams niyo. Okay. Kailangan lang magaral kayo. Okay, class. Anyways, if you have any questions now, now, now is your time. Okay. Do you have any questions for me? Wala. Pag, pag wala kayong question, ako magtatanong. <laughs> pag wala kayong question. Kasi kanina, nag-iwan ako ng question kay Sir Marco. Hindi pala, natulog pala si Sir Marco. Hindi na daw binasa. Meron ako mga questions na iniwan kay Sir Marco. Okay, wala. Wala kayong question. Ako mag... Ah, si Ned mo naman. Okay. Sino makakasagot ng unang question? Sabi kasi ni Sir Marco, sabi ko kasi Sir Marco, malilate ako. Nang galing ako sa ibang ospital, gusto ko makita kung maganda ba yung ibang ospital. Kasi ito lang yung ospital na nakita ko eh. Curiosity lang ba? Tapos tinignan ko din yung histopat lab nila. In fairness, social din Sir Marco. Okay? Kahit na maliit lang. Ha? Okay. So kailangan nila sagutin yun within the day ha. Alright. So, we're going to move on with tissue, tissue fixation. Sarap ng tulog ni Sir Marco, di ba? Isang oras akong nawala, di ba? Saya-saya, no, Sir Marco. Kakaingit, sana all. Ako hindi pa ako matutulog, mag pa ako, Sir Marco, ha? <laughs> Alright. Let's go to the next, uh, the next part of the discussion, which is fixation, or tissue fixation. It's, uh, obviously, we're going to talk about what we're going to learn after this, um, after this discussion. All right. I, after the, uh, let's see what we have on the next slide. Is it? May ano tayo eh? Okay. May sinusundan tayong time. Okay. So our topics for today, uh, topics in this discussion includes um, fixatives, of course, the classification of fixatives and the type of fixatives. This is actually one semester here in the U.S. If you're taking the <laughs> I just found that out. If you if you're taking the histotechno histotechno technologist um, certification exam, or if you're going to if you want to become a histotechnologist, you will take up um, a class in fixation or tissue preservation. They call the subject tissue preservation. Okay, so let's start with the most important one. Uh, next slide, please, Moyo. With regards to fixation. What is the most important thing to consider when working in the histopathology lab? Ano nga ba, class? Ano class? Ang kaila, ano ang pinaka-important? Mark Segi.
Aksidente lang yan, Mark. <laughs> Aksidente lang ba yan? Ah, ano? Aksidente ano lang ba yan? Nagtaas ka ng kamay mo eh. <laughs> Hello? Ah, oh, ano nga? Ano, anong sagot mo diyan sa question na 'yan? With regards to fixation, what is the most important thing to consider when working in the histopathology lab? Any histopathology book that you open, you will see this. First step, very good. Okay, can we see? Tama nga siya, baka may mali siya. Eh. Clearing kaya. <laughs> mali kaya. <laughs> Clearing kaya hindi. Fixation, tama siya. Pero in fairness ha, si Patrick at si ano, hindi ko inaasahan si Marco ha. Si Patrick at si Sir, si Mark Segi ang sumasagot kayo na. In fairness ha. Bakit pagod ba pinagod ba yung iba? Ha? Grabe tong mga mga estudyante natin ha. All right, next. Okay. So, what is the primary aim of fixation? Okay? What is the primary aim of fixation? Who can answer that one? Mm-mm-mm. James Paul. Ayan na si James Paul. Nagparamdam na din si James Paul. Isa din to. Loko-loko din to eh. Nasa na si James Paul. <laughs> Nang ano? Okay. Yun lang. Preservation na nga eh. Alam lang nga natin na preservation nga siya. Yun lang. Now, nahirapan akong intindihin si, pa- si James Paul. Hindi ko naintindihan si James Paul. Ang narinig ko, brrrr. Anyways, sabi nga ni James Paul, ulitin ko na lang yung sinabi ko nuwari ni James Paul. Sabi nga ni James Paul, it is to preserve, dot, 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 <laughs> to preserve the cellular and the physiologic integrity of cells. Okay? To be as lifelike as possible. Okay? Okay? Eh, yung mga nakikita natin sa libro, okay, Uh, even as we go as far as anatomy and your anatomy and physiology class nakikita niyo yung mga drawing di ba doon ng mga liver cells di ba yung mga drawing ng mga nephron natin lahat yan is because of fixation kung hindi tama ang pagfi-fix ng mga unang mga mga ninuno natin hindi natin makikita yung mga yan hindi natin mai-explain yan ha class all right now Of course, when we have a primary concern, when we have a primary um, primary aim, we also have a secondary aim. And what is the secondary aim of fixation? The secondary aim of fixation is, of course, to harden and to protect the tissue from further processing and handling. Okay? Pinapatigas natin ang sales class, ha? Ngumisi ka na naman, Mark Segi. Puro ka talaga kalukohan. Okay? Sinabi ko lang harden, nagloka, nagngisi ka na kaagad. Puro ka talaga kalukohan, Mark Segi, ha? Okay? Ito din yung anak ko. Tinuturuan mo ng kabulastog. Nakita ko, nagnisi na din. Nako. Okay? So, you, ha- you, want to harden the th- you want to harden the sample and to protect the sample also. Okay? Why, why, do we need, why do I emphasize the need to harden the sample? Because if the, if the sample is not hard enough, you won't be able to cut it. Right? You won't be able to cut it. That's why... That's also the reason why um, that's also the reason why fixation is the most critical step. If you if you messed up at this part at this stage of the tissue process, you messed up the whole way. Okay? You messed up everything. Everything else doesn't matter. Okay? Clear? Clear tayo? Okay. Now, there are mechanisms that we have to talk about and I think that's on the next slide, right? There are mechanisms that occur when the fixate when a fixative is added to surgical samples. Okay? First thing that happens is that there's cross-linking of proteins, the covalent addition of a reactive group, depending on what type of uh, depending on what type of fixative that you used, and there's going to be dehydration. Okay, formation of salt and heat. Talaga sir, umiinit siya. Oh oh, umiinit siya kasi nga pagka, when you produce a salt, uh, when you produce when uh, when you mix in chemicals, de ba? Even though they don't look like they're going to explode, some of them explode, right? sa laboratory sa uh, let's go as, uh, let's go even as basic as your general chemistry. 'Di ba meron tayong mga chemicals na hindi natin pinagdidikit, mga dry ingredients natin, 'di ba? Kasi umiinit 'yan and becomes combustible if you mix it with the wrong with the wrong ones, right? So, dehydration occurs also in um, fixation. Sir, akala ko may dehydration step kasi nga 'di ba sabi niyo FDC Chill lang kayo, mamaya natin pag-uusapan yun. What happens is that there's going, there's just going to be a formation of 
salt. Bakit kay bakit kailangan ng fixative natin pwede di, dapat magdi-dehydrate din para hindi mabulok ang sample. Okay? Para hindi magkaroon ng autolysis. Why? why? Kasi wa, where there is water, autolysis occurs. Why? Because anything that you take out of the body, bacteria will eat up. Okay? Always make always think about the sample. Ang pasyente natin sa laborat as as laboratorians is the sample, not the patient itself. Okay? I um I've always uh, I've always come to the hospital knowing that my samples are like like right now when I go to the hospital I know that my sample is my patients. Um, um I go to the microbiology lab and check if my old samples are still okay. Di ba yung mga mikrobyo ko kung tumubo ba? Diba? I go to the I go to the phlebotomy department to see if the samples are clotted. Kasi ang samples natin ang ang bread and butter natin as medical technologists, diba? And here in histopathology, our our patients are the tissues that we receive. Okay? So clear? So you always have to come into that understanding. Every time you go to the laboratory, you need to know that the patient in order for you to take care of the patient you know to you need to know the integrity of the sample okay and if you don't receive the sample in a fixative you have to reject it otherwise if you check if you if you accepted the sample they're going to say in accept ni Patrick eh si Patrick ulit yung example ko diba imagine mo na imagine mo Patrick nangangamoy na yung sample bulok na bulok na yung sample inuuod na tapos sabi sabi niya naka formalin yan eh nung nalaman mo hindi naman po to amoy formalin Tubig lang yung nilagay ninyo. Saline ata nilagay ng nurse. ba? Diba? May mga ganon. May mga instances na ganon, class. And it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to reject a sample specifically for histopath. But there are some who are not knowledgeable with these types of things. Kaya nga, kaya, kaya nga iba ang klase ng profesyon natin. ba diba, class? Okay? So, class, kailangan i-reject ang sample sa histopath. Kung na, na, hindi amoy ano. Amoy bulok talaga siya. Pagka ganun, dapat kini-question nyo yun, class, ha? Yung amoy bulok talaga siya. Pero hindi naman siya mukhang ano. Hindi naman siya mukhang sample na, mu na galing sa... Tapos, tinignan mo pala yung case ng pasyente sa ano, sa chart niya. Kasi usually, pag histopath samples, makikita nyo din dun yung initial diagnosis ng patient, eh. ba diba? Nakalagay lang naman dun, polyp lang. Tapos, ang date, five days ago. Oh, hindi ka ba magtataka? Kaya nangangamoy bulok yung sample kasi fi hindi fixative ang ginamit. Normal saline ang ginamit, di ba? So clear tayo doon class ha. Okay? Now. <coughs> Next tayo class. Um <coughs> dehydration commonly occurs in fixatives that are based on what? <coughs> based on what dapat yan hindi of what ah? Based on what? If it's based on alcohol. So hindi lahat ng fixative natin, lahat formalin, formalin, formalin na. Pag sinabing for pag sinabing fixation, ang sample na ang ang aim natin is to preserve. Hindi ibig sabihin alcohol, alcohol, al hindi sinabing formalin, formalin, formalin. Maririnig natin mamaya yung formalin pa ulit-ulit, pero hindi lahat ng fixative is formalin, okay? Not all fixatives are formalin based, okay? Some of them are alcohol based or metal based. Okay? So dehydration can occur um, specifically when you are sa when your fixative the fixative that you used is an alcohol so we're talking about the chemistry of some um, some chemicals used for fixation all right now let's go let's go to the types of fixatives then now what are the types of fixatives so there are two types um, based on based on chemistry um, it could be an additive fixative or it could be a non-additive fixative if it's a non-additive fixative, it's going to become part of the tissue to form the cross links. Okay, if it's a non-additive, it, uh, it it facilitates the removal of water to form cross links. So basically, this coagulates the proteins. Okay, all right. So nothing causes the cell to uh, nothing causes the sample to uh, to cross, but more so, it has something to do with the removal of water to form the cross links. Okay? So, yun lang yun. From the name itself, hindi siya nagiging part. Hindi siya na-add sa chemical structure ng tissue. Clear? Clear? Nakakasunod pa? Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay? What are the practical considerations when fixing a sample? So, you need to have, um, you need to have practical considerations. Need to know the speed of the fixation or the fixative that you're going to uh, you're going to use. 
you need to know the volume of the fixative in compa- in contrast with the volume of the sample that you're 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 going to fix you need to know the penetration rate of the fixative to tissue wag puro kalokohan pag sinabing penetration ang easy na naman to si ano si Mark Segi pag sinabing uh, penetration rate how fast the fixative goes inside the tissue okay and the duration of the fixative okay the duration of fixation rather all right clear tayo speed volume penetration rate and duration okay svpd tumataray talaga may mga ano may mga um antag doon mnemonics na naman wala akong maiisip na witty ngayon eh let's go with the next slide Medyo nagmamadali si Sir Manuel kasi. How fast should the specimen be fixed after the removal from bod- the body? Sige nga, how fast do you think should the sample be fixed? Common sense. This is again is another common sense question. James Paul. 2 to 6 hours? 2 to 6 hours? Totoo ka? Patrick. Tingnan nga natin kung tama si James mo sa 2 to 6 hours. ASAP dapat. As soon as possible. Pag nagantay ka ng 2 to 6 hours, James Paul, bulok ra ang sample natin. Okay? Wala na tayong makikita pag kami, micro- pag kami microscope natin siya kung natapos man natin yung process. Okay? As much as possible, nandyan ang nurse, salusalo na niya, may formalin na yung lalagyan. Okay? Salusalo na niya yung uh, tissue. Okay? Or nakalagay sa kidney basin yun, usually sa OR, dadalhin na yan dyan sa labas, diretso na sa ano, tapos may pangalan at orders na din. Kaya nga class, pag, nakip- napansin, nyo, pag napansin nyo class, mas nauuna yung mga orders kesa dun sa operation ng pasyente. Makikita nyo minsan sa ano, makikita nyo minsan, pag nag-extract kayo ng sample, OR ng, or uh, nag-extract kayo ng sample, and then nag-work kayo sa requisition, makikita nyo, ay, kakakuha ko lang ng dugo dito. Bakit ganun? Ang requisition niya is 1 o'clock, pero ang OR niya 2 p.m. ba? Ganun yun usually. Kasi nakaredy na dapat kung ano yung mga samples na kukunin nila. Alam na nila kung ano yung dapat no, i-request nila. Okay? Kaya ganun. Kaya ASAP lagi siya. Okay? Kahit pa ano siya, kahit pa ano lang siya, appendectomy class. So it has to be fixed immediately. Okay? Mamaya natin pag-uusapan yung 2 to 6 hours mo, James Paul. I think I know what you meant by that one. Okay? Now, let's move on to the volume of fixative um, needed. Um, how much fixative is generally used per volume of specimen? Um, the fixative must be 20, 20 times the volume of the tissue. Okay? 20 times the volume of the tissue. Lagi nyo tatandaan, class, sa histopathology, pag nagtanong ng ratio sa inyo, tandaan nyo lang lagi 20, ang number na 20, except for infiltration. 45 sa infiltration. Okay? 20 on everything. Ito na, ang, ito na ang mga tips. Ahoy ko sa inyo, class, ha? 20 on everything. 45 on... 45 on infiltration. Okay? Yan ang mga shortcut ko. Dap, isulat nyo na yan sa ano. Isulat nyo na yan sa post-it notes ninyo, class. Okay? 20, 20 times on everything and 45 times for on infiltration. Okay? Clear? Clear? Clear tayo dyan, ha? Alright. Let's move on. Nice to know. It's a nice to know question. If a specimen is to be presented in a museum, what should the volume of the fixative be? O, diba? Pa, diba nakakakita kayo ng mga samples din sa ano? I think, Sir Marco, since you studied in UST, meron kayong example ng ganyan. Um, Doon sa St. Martin de Porres building. Diba naalala ko pa? <laughs> and, uh, hindi mo napuntahan yun. Doon sa College of Medicine yun, sir. Nandoon sa pinakataas. Um, uh, ano nga yun? Ah, uh, okay. Basta ang naalala ko ang building niya, Colegio Anatomica. Ang pangalan nun, Colegio Anatomica. Ang ano niya, ang pangalan nung ano, presentation ninyo. Parang ka- College of Anatomy siguro yun. Kasi Espanyol lang, at naka-Espanyol. Diba? Nandun yun sa fifth... Uh-oh. Nandun yun sa fifth floor, sir. So, if a specimen is to be presented just like there, just like in St. Martin de... The organs in St. Martin de Porres, 
the forest, the forest tuloy, the forest, you're going you're going to need at least 50 to 100 times the that of the specimen. So para yun nga yung mga body yung mga nandoon kasi sa ano na yon yung sa Kolehiyo Anatomika doon sa UST. Buong katawan ng tao yung nakalagay sa ano sa form nakasubmerge sa formaldehyde. Okay? And then I think yung iba hindi nga ano eh, hindi nga formaldehyde ata yung iba kasi ano kasi parang jelly yung nasa loob. I would say it could be a silo- uh, it could be a siloidin ano. It could probably be siloidin yung iba doon. Kasi mukhang na-process na, na yung tissue nun eh. Okay? So, yon Nice to know lang siya, class. Baka lang, import, baka lang itanong sa board exam ninyo. Malay nyo, magtrabaho kayo sa, sa museum. Diba? Alright, next. The penetration rate of formalin is 1 mm per hour. Important ba yan na tinatanong? Um, naka-highlight, dun sa li- naka-highlight dun sa lecture ng mga ano eh, no, na inattendan ko eh. So, please make sure to remember the 1 mm per hour rule. Okay? So, next slide. Yeah, 1 mm per hour. Tama pa. Okay? The duration of tissue fixation for routine samples is 2 to 6 hours. Okay? Yan yung sinasabi ni ano ni James Paul. Duration. Iba yung duration sa ano. So, for example, na-receive na natin yung sample ni Patrick. Nakalagay na sa ano, nakalagay na sa normal buffered saline or NB, uh, normal buffered formalin, NBF. Ay, sorry, neutral buffered formalin. Alright? Galing sa OR yon Dapat, uh, pagkatapos ng OR, pa, dapat uh, during the time na nag-operate sila, by the time na mag-clock out yung histotech, dapat na-receive na yon class. Okay? Nailagay na sa ano yon Sa autotechnicon, kung autotechnicon man ang gamit nyo or tissue tech. Okay? Kasi nag-start na yung fixation nun. But for electron microscopy, it's 3 hours. Okay? Anything more than that can cause damage to the tissue. Okay? Because remember, formalin is not a normal ta- normal chemical found in the human body. It just helps us it just helps us preserve it to, a, to an almost lifelike um an almost lifelike structure. Okay? All right. Now, Let's talk about the next slide, uh, factors that affect the efficacy of fixatives. So there's uh, there's actually not two, um, there's four actually there. I wanted, I meant to change that when I typed it because I, I, I read along the discussion and there was more actually. Um, please change that one to four when you get the copy of your lecture or where, when you listen into this lecture. Okay, so um, there's four things that you need to remember um, that in, that causes the um, that causes the fixation rate to be to be better. One is the osmolality of the fixative. Second is the concentration of the fixative that you're using. Then the temperature and the thickness of the organism. Okay, so you can alter these things. Okay, but uh, too much osmolality or too little of osmolality can affect the um, cellular uh, architecture of what you want to view. Concentration can cause shrinkage also, or uh, if you over concentrate something, it could cause shrinkage of a certain organ, uh, of certain organ or um, certain tissue types, or you could actually cause it to explode. Temperature can coagulate proteins, and the thickness can um, can impede the penetration rate of tissues. Right? We discussed that prior to um, looking at this slide. Now. Next, is, we're going to talk about it one by one um, later. Next, the ideal osmolality of fixatives in the following techniques. If you are going to use light and electron microscope, you need to take into account the osmolality of the fixatives. Okay? So for fixatives that are going to undergo light microscopy, the osmolality should be 450, uh, 400 to 450 microosmoles. Okay? For electron microscopy, it's different. It needs to be a little bit lower. Because why? You're going to see particles form if there's a lot of a sample, if there's a lot of the art of the samples there. So therefore, you need to reduce it. Okay? Osmolality is basically the count of the samples when they are uh, the, the count of particles flowing around in a particular solution. Right? So what happens in electron microscopy is that there's a, there are lasers that blast a particular uh, a part, uh, a particular part of your tissue, 
and then the laser the, the laser bounces light uh, based on the fa based on those things okay so iba siya as opposed to light microscopy light microscope you pass light underneath it okay for electron microscopy the visualization is different you blast it with a laser kaya nga electron microscopy Therefore, bababaan natin yung number ng particles doon para hindi magkaroon ng interference doon sa, ar the ar sa architecture. What you are seeing is not actually what is what what uh, what the cell looks like, more so the reflection of the lasers as it blasts a particular sample. Okay? Yun yung iintindihin ninyo. Ha? Light microscope, sa likod ng slide siya. Okay? So, sa likod siya na specimen. Pag electron microscope, yung visualization nasa harap. Okay? And then it takes a picture of that one. Clear ba? Okay? Clear tayo doon. Okay? Parang ano siya, um, light microscope, yung spectrophotometer, yung light source niya nasa likod ng sample. For electron microscope, nasa harap yung light source. But, but, but it's not a... Uh, let's call... Yeah, I would consider it as a light source because it's lasers. So, nagets nyo yung analogy ko. What the difference between the two. You'll see later on why why that analogy is important. Okay? Now, let's talk about a normal buffered saline. Uh, buffered formalin, rather. Bakit, bakit saline lagi yung pinag-uusapan ko? Ano ba nangyari sa akin? Um, okay. So, 10% neutral buffered formalin usually has an osmolality of 1,500 milliosmoles. Bakit ganun, sir? Akala ko ba, sir, 400 to 450? Kasi, class, si no, no, neutral buffered saline, neutral buffered formalin is used most commonly. Okay? And it is a diluted sample. Okay? It's a diluted chemical. Okay? You dilute it with, you dilute it with saline. Okay? Kaya nga buffered saline siya eh. Or formal buffered saline ang tawa. Another name niya is formal buffered saline. Okay? So, mataas yung salt concentration niya. Pag ano siya, pag um, ibang, ibang chemicals, yun yung 400 to 450. Okay? Yun yung stock, ano niya, stock osmolality niya. Kumbaga. Alright? Clear tayo doon? Kasi baka, baka sabihin kasi ni Renmar, Sir, you lying! You just, said, you just said it's 400 to 450. Why then you just say 1,500? Ganun. Narinig ko na yun sinasabi ni Renmar. Ganun na ganun pati yung accent. You lying. <laughs> Alright? Okay. So let's move on to the next uh, the next part of the discussion, which is the importance of maintaining the fixative osmolality. Okay? Why is it important? Osmolality influences the microenvironment of the sample. Inappropriate levels can cause the cells to shrink, lice, or even result in altered morphological features. Okay? So, yun lang yun. Very important natin matandaan yun. Okay? Actually, di nga yan tinatanong. Alright? Let's move on to the next type of, uh, the next discussion. Concentration of formaldehyde used in routine histopathology, histopathologic techniques is 10% formalin. But, what they sell commercially is 30% formaldehyde solutions. Okay? That's what they usually sell. It's usually around 30 to 40%. Okay? Clear ba tayo dyan? Okay? Hindi ko na alam kung saan nila kinukuha yung formaldehyde. Pero, sa lahat ng laboratory na tiningnan ko, nag-text pa ako sa mga friends ko sa Saudi, sa mga friends ko na nagtatrabaho sa Dubai, yung kaibigan ko na nag-work sa Australia, tinext ko din siya. Sabi ko, pumunta ka nga dun sa may histopat. Tingnan mo kung ano yung stock solution nila. Okay? Most of them, they would say 30 to 40%. So I just I know um uh, 25 to 40 percent. So nilagay ko na lang dun sa mean. <laughs> Ginawa ko na lang yung mean. I don't think it's important because what you need to remember as uh, as histotechnologists is to make 10 percent formaldehyde. By the way, class, um, there was one uh, one batch in the board exam that uh, asked the students to prepare a 10 percent formaldehyde solution with. Uh, stock solution. So, hindi ako magaling sa math class. You need to review your analytical chemistry. Okay? This is volume percent versus uh, equal volume percent solutions siya. Okay? So, alam na ninyo yun. Dapat. Yung volume percent equals to volume percent of uh, stock solution number 2. Dapat. Okay? 
So tandaan niyo 'yun kasi there was one board exam that asked uh, that asked the people to prepare a stock solu- uh, prepare a 10% solution from a 30% stock solution. Okay? So dapat tatandaan niyo siya. All right? Now, what happens to tissues when fixed together? I think that's the next one. What happens to tissues that are fixed in a higher concentration of a fixative? The tissue hardens because there's a lot of coagulation that's going on. It overcoagulates, okay? It uh, the cross links become too intense that the cells coagulate. All right? Next Mamaya natin pag-uusapan isa-isa, pero I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what happens when um, fixatives get... Uh, kaya may mga specific examples ako, 10% neutral buffered saline, neutral formal saline, mga ganon. Okay? Glutaraldehyde is a, spec- is a fixative that needs to be concentrated at 3% because uh, because that is the most... That is the concentration for that have been studied by Gregorios. Okay? According to Gregorius, that's 3%. And I think that is important to remember. Glutaraldehyde kasi among the other organ, the other fixatives that you will need to remember. Okay? Huwag ka mag-alala. Ulit-ulitin ko naman din yan. Okay? Temperature naman tayo. Let's go to temperature. Temperature of most routine samples that are fixed are held at uh, room temperature, which is 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. Okay? It needs to be maintained at that one for manual methodologies or manual fixation. But if it is in an automated fixi- fixator, which means somebody, something will pull it out of the fixative, kaya hindi siya mag over decomp- hindi siya mag over de- uh, over fixate, kaya mag harden <coughs> 40 degrees Celsius. Why? Kasi ka, di ba sinabi ko kanina, the higher the temperature, the faster the penetration rate will be. Okay? Because you want to, because it moves around the particles. Right? Um, basic uh, basic chemistry lang tayo nito. Diba? Uh, laws of thermodynamic state, uh, uh, for particles move faster in a vacuum, <coughs> in a vacuum when it is heated. The same principle applies to fixation. Okay? So clear? Clear tayo dyan. Ha? Kaya pag mas pinainit, mas mabilis ang processing. Kaya ka, instead of 24 hours ang processing time sa uh, sa laboratory pag gamit mo auto technicon it's somewhere around 14 to 16 hours lang kasi nga nawala na yung human error okay clear okay now let's move on to fixation of electron microscopy samples i think that's the next slide yeah fixation of electron microscopy samples are held at what temperature it's held at colder temperatures because you want to fr- uh, you want the samples to not undergo autolysis faster. Okay? So, 0 to 4 degrees Celsius in sagot dyan. Tama ba ako? Patingin nga mo yun. Okay. 0 to 4 degrees Celsius. Naalala ko pa. Okay? Now, let's go to, I think the next one is urgent biopsies. Yeah. Formalin for urgent, urgent biopsies must be held at what temperature? 60 degrees Celsius. Makikita nyo, class, Karamihan ng, um, karamihan ng mga temperature ranges po is not going to exceed 60 degrees Celsius. That is the my rule of thumb. And you should remember that class because if anything anything greater than 60 degrees Celsius could damage the normal cell morphology. Okay? Anything greater than that can damage the cell morphology. Okay? Next. With the exception of TB. Okay? With the exception of TB detection. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi hindi naman tayo microbiology, kaya sabi ko, for histopath lang, di ba? Kasi, for TB detection, it's going to be held at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? Why? Bakit kaya? Sino makakasagot niyan? It's a review of your mycobacteriology. Why do you think, you, why, do you, why do we need to... Uh, fix the samples for TB detection at 100 degrees Celsius. Sige nga. Maka- sinong naka- makakasagot niyan? Bigyan natin ng... Bigyan, parang gusto ko mamigay ng aginaldo ngayon. Dexter, nakakuha ka na ba? Nag- nagsenda daw yung... Ano ko eh. Yung secretary ko. Ay, hindi mo pa na-check. Pakicheck naman. Magbibigay tayo ng pamasko ngayon. Ten dollars. Magkano ba yun sa ano? Magkano ba yun sa pera natin yun? Palitan daw ngayon is... How much? Calculator. 
55 daw times 10. May 550 kung sino yung makakaano. Kung sino yung makakasagot. Bakit sa tingin nyo, 100 degrees Celsius pag TV detection ang fixation time ng, for, ng ano, formalin ba, formalin. Wala. Wala makakasagot. Sayang naman. Pang ano na lang natin, Sir Marco, libre ko na lang sa'yo ng ano. Wala ata makakasagot. Pag wala, pumapamas ko ko eh, Sir Marco, pambili, niya, pambili ng ano. Ano yun, Sir? Yung Welkin Moon natin. Wala. Class, kawawa naman to pag nag-microbiology itong mga to. Uy, class. Kasi class, ba usually ang mga TB samples, either magkakaroon ng caseous necrosis or maraming mucus. Kaya kailangan natin i-dissolve yung mucus. ba At saka, tandaan nyo, class, hindi naman, hindi naman natin kailangan yung tissue, eh. Di ba? Kaya 100 degrees Celsius, ang kailangan natin makita is yung TB, organism, yung MT, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Kaya yun na sinasabi ko sa inyo, yung common sense, yung common, common sense question siya, Klaus. Ang lodo ko, alala talaga ako sa mga students natin, Sir Marco. <laughs> Napapagod na sila sa dami kang aralin. Hoy, chill lang kasi kayo. <laughs> Dapat pag nag-aaral, ginagawa rin yung katatawanan. <laughs> Tinan nyo ako, ginawa akong katatawanan. No? Diba? <laughs> Nakapasa ako. Dapat kailangan yung magkaroon. Kailangan yung magkaroon. Nagkaroon ng ano. Wala, Sir Marco, isi-send ko na lang sa'yo pagka ano. Libre lang natin si Sir Marco ng ano. Para hindi bumula-bunga nga niya sa ngayong Pasko. May welcome moon pa si Sir Marco. Diba? Saya-saya niya. Okay? Alright. Next, let's move on to... The next question. Samples that need to be fixed for the purpose, dapat yan, for the purpose of DNA and RNA studies, must be held at what temperature? Okay? Okay, this is one of the few that will have greater than, um, greater than 60 degrees Celsius. Ito na siguro yung last. Kasi nga, ba, pag DNA, we want it to be, we want to, we want it to what? For DNA... It's 65 degrees Celsius. For RNA, it's 45 degrees Celsius. Okay, just like the PCR methodologies, right? I'm not sure if some of you have already studied, uh, have refreshed your um, your molecular diagnostics, but it's something around that range. Okay? Next. You can also use microwaves, by the way, class. Ayan na, microwaves. To improve tissue penetration. The temperature settings of these ma machines are usually set at 65 degrees Celsius. Again, heat hastens the penetration rate, but, but it's timed. Okay? May time siya. Kaya, controlled din siya. Hindi siya yung iniwan lang ng tao tapos ininit. Okay? Alright. And there is a vortex spinner. Um, uh, sorry, a magnetic bead sa ilalim na nagkakos ng agitation ng fluids. Kaya, ano, walang human manipulation. Dapat kasi, pag, ano, pag nag-fix ka ng sample, tapos gusto mo mapabilis yung process, may constant na naghahalo. And in order for us to do that, we only, we, we need to use a magnetic stirrer. Yung may maliit na bead, na may maliit na beads, hindi ko alam kung nakakita na kayo nun, nilalagay siya sa ilalim, tapos may nagro-rotate sa kanya, sa ilalim nung ano. Ang itsura niya is parang, ano, parang weighing scale lang, pero lagi siya may kasamang magnetic beads. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to the next slide, which has something to do with the thickness of the sample. So we've already talked about the four things, um, four things to consider, practical considerations. I think this is the last one. The thickness of a sample is important, but are based on the type of microscopy technique to be used. What is the ideal thickness for the following methodologies? I started with electron microscopy because in electron microscopy, it needs to be thinner. Okay, it needs to be thinner. Okay, kaya nga ang gamit natin, di ba, ultra-thin microtome knives, di ba? Ultra-thin microtome knives ang gamit natin for electron microscopy, which is something that is be below 5 micrometers. Okay? For light microscopy, for light microscopy, it needs to be some, somewhere uh, between 2 millimeters by 0.5 millimeters for my light microscopy. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with the 0.4 micrometers. 
I would I just want you guys to focus on the difference uh, difference bit the thick the thickness of the sample okay the width is something that uh, is irrelevant even for for practical applications that is irrelevant I would I would not dwell on that one that much okay anyways let's move on to the um, to the penetrative uh, penetrative force or penetrative action of fixatives the penetration of a fixative can be slowed down by two things the size of the sample okay or the thickness of the sample the presence of mucus the presence of fats the presence of blood and cold temperatures okay so those things can can actually interfere with the penetrative power um, which do you think will be, will um, would be fixed first again another uh, another would be completely fixed first Theoretically, okay, we're using we're gonna I'm gonna ask you a common sense question 20 millimeters of a skin biopsy Or 10 millimeters of a piece of tissue from the spleen Sino sa tingin nyo ang mas mabilis mag, ano, mas mabilis ma-fix? Theoretically. Okay? Knowing the, knowing these things in front of you, who do you think, will, uh, which, which of the file, these samples do you think will have the, um, penetrative power, faster penetration, uh, or completeness would be completely fixed faster? It's a survey class. You have to answer. Tatlo lang ang ano namin ni Sir Marco. Apat lang. Ayan. Si Mel Malina. <laughs> Tinamad si Mel, wag salita, wag type. Mel, mali ka na. <laughs> Sabi ko sa inyo, pag nagsagot kayo, dapat kompleto. Mel, ayusin mo yung sagot mo. <laughs> Ayan, o oh, ba? Buti pa si Mel, oh. Nakikinig si Mel. Hindi ko pa nakikita yung Junakis kung isa. Nasaan yung isa kong Junakis? Nandiyan ba ang kapatid mo, Renmar? Ay, wala. Absent pala. Wala siya lang yung nasa B, eh. Nasaan na yung iba? Walang nagsagot. Unti lang ang students namin ni Sir Marco ngayon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hanggang ano lang? Less than 10 lang? Tama ba yan? Lumalabas na naman ang ano ko? Ang ilongga accent ko? Ano ba yan, class? Okay. Ang tamang sagot is yung nagsagot ng 20mm na biopsy. Bakit? Tingnan nyo yung nandun sa harap nyo. Presence of blood. Diba? Diba? Kung, sino ang mas onti ang blood supply? Balat or yung spleen? Pinag-aralan na natin dati. Nung isang araw, pa, nung isang araw mo pa yan sinasagot sa akin, Patrick. Diba? Diba? Spleen ka ng spleen. ba Mas onti ang ano ng balat, ba Ng skin supply. Ang blood supply ng balat. Therefore, the fixation time is longer. Okay? Ganun lang yun, class. Okay? Kaya nga, kaya nga ang prerequisite ng classes ninyo, prerequisite, ba ng ano ninyo is histology. Kasi kailangan malaman nyo kung ano yung mga parts ng body na inaano, pinifix. ba so, clear na tayo doon, Dexter. May tanong ka pa sa akin, Dexter. Si, ano, si Shelo. Shelo, ikaw. May tanong ka ba? May, may tanong ba si Shelo? Okay. So, wala, na, wala din tanong si Shelo. Hindi ako pinansin ni Shelo. Grabe ka, ha? <laughs> Grabe. <laughs> Bakit ganon? Hindi <laughs> 
Shelo, ba't ganon? Bakit ano, thumbs down? Ano ba yan, Shelo? Akala ko pa naman, may rapport na tayo, Shelo. Dahil ano, dahil ata hindi siya nanalo sa ano. <laughs> sa debate. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go with the next to the next slide, Moyo. Okay, the rate of penetration in, of tissue is usually improved by ayan nga sinabi ko kanina, agitation and what's the other one, class? Pakita mo na ano. Giraffe na giraffe na sila. The size and thickness, okay? So agitation. So, can you manipulate the size and thickness? Of course we can. How? You ask the pathologist to cut it smaller. Diba? <laughs> diba? Yun lang yun. Yun lang yun. Common, yun. May mga ano, may mga questions na itatanong sa inyong gang class sa exam ninyo. Which of the following variables can improve the uh, can improve the rate of fixation? And you, as the med techs, who are supposedly graduates of BS MLS need to know those things, okay? All right, let's move on to the next slide. Characteristic of a, characteristics of a good fixative. Ano ba yan? Meron palang good boy, bad boy na ano na fixative. <laughs> Hindi, yan lang yung criteria for ano for selecting a fixative. For example lang uh, gusto maging gusto magtayo ni Dexter ng uh, ay ni, si Patrick na lang kasi si Patrick yung cadaver natin ngayon. <laughs> okay. Every time na nagtuturo ako ng ano ng histopat, meron ako pinipili na isang student, yun yung cadaver. Okay. <laughs> All right, so si Patrick yung ano, si Patrick yung cadaver natin. Ngayon. Any any um for example, um magtatayo si Patrick ng ano ng laboratory na ano lang, na freestanding, lab lang talaga siya. He wants to see sino ba ang magandang fixative. Ano bang classic? Ano bang fixative ang maganda? Syempre, ang una nating ang una nating titingnan is yung presyo, 'di ba, Patrick? Siyempre mukhang pera tayo, Patrick. Alangan magtayo ka for the sole purpose of ano, di ba? For the sole purpose of... Saan ka nakatira, ano, Patrick? Saan? Wala kang sound. Tigilan mo ko. I-type mo na lang, friend. Bubisit ako sa iyo. <laughs> <laughs> I-type mo na lang. For example, alangan magtayo si Patrick nang hindi siya kikita, di ba? O, alangan to help the people of Quezon City. Di ba? Just for the sole purpose of helping the people of Quezon City. Ano, ano yun? Di ba? Alright, so the first thing that you need to take into consideration when, you, uh, of a good fi- when you're looking for a good fixative is if it's cheap and economical. Okay, so among the things that we're going to discuss, um, formaldehyde is the most commonly used because it's the cheapest okay and it's this it's one of the safest ones to handle although it can still be carcinogenic compared to compared to mercury chloride it's uh, it's safer okay it's fast acting and it permits even penetration we don't need to manipulate it further we just need to dilute it with saline um, it inhibits bacterial decomposition yes and, uh, and it prevents autolysis or inhibits autolysis. It also hardens tissue. Kaya nga yung mga cadaver na binuklat ninyo, if ever nagbuklat kayo ng cadaver, matitigas na. Kasi nga, they were, um, these thing, the uh, replacement for blood in these things, or in cad- in cadavers, is basically formaldehyde. And it must be isotonic. Yun na yun, yung tonicity kanina. Um, so, that, so, that's, so as to pre- prevent um, decomposition, uh, uh, alteration of the morphology and it must render the tissue insensitive to subsequent processes. Ano ba yung mga subsequent processes na yun? Dadaan pa siya ng FDC. Ano ba yun? Dadaan pa siya ng dehydration. Ano pa? Seat. Clearing. Impig- impregnation. Dadaan pa siya ng staining at saka ay ng ano, ng microtomy, di ba? So, dapat makasurvive siya doon. Hindi, hindi, siya, hindi dapat siya makaka-apekto doon sa lahat na yan. Kaya nga kanina, di ba, kakaumpisa lang natin. Sinanong ko si Mark Segi, what is the most important consideration when you are fixing a sample or you're working in the histopathology lab? Ang sagot ni Mark Segi is that it that uh, fixati- fixation is the per- first and the most critical step. Okay? Because you want to preserve it and you want it to survive 
what is going to happen in the subsequent steps. Okay? And it must be compatible with a wide variety of staining procedures. Diba? So, dapat hindi niya i-dissolve yung yung stain. Okay? So, dapat, pag sinabing periodic shift, ang makikira natin sa glycogen, pink talaga dapat. Kung ang ano natin is periodic shift or periodic acid shift. Okay? Clear? Alright. Ito na tayo. Ito na ang bulk ng discussion natin, class. Actually, actually, class, sa, pag ako gumagawa ng, ng exam, karamihan ng questions ko dito sa next topic natin, pakita mo sa kanila mo yun. Karamihan ng questions ko sa topic na to. Okay? Karamihan. Pero babaguhin ko kasi tinamaan ako ng kulog. Okay? Babaguhin ko. Kasi syempre, naka-attend ako ng lecture ng iba eh. <laughs> naka-attend ako sa ibang bansa na lecture. Alam ko na ngayon kung paano gumawa ng tanong. Di ba? <laughs> Nakagawa na. Alam ko na ngayon kung paano gumawa ng tanong sa histopat eh. By the way, class, kayo yung first class na tinuruan ko. Not, not, pri not a private session or private review ng histopat. Kaya, kaya you should you should be um, you should be uh, you should be very I think you should be very um, I wouldn't say thankful kasi masyadong mayabang yun no I would say I I would feel uh, I feel very lucky na lang ako I I would I feel very lucky I'm honored to teach you guys or to to impart with you the knowledge that I've learned uh, through the six weeks of attending the classes here in um, in the University of Nebraska okay so yeah all right so, um, what are the, um, let's talk about fixative types. I think we have to talk about them based on fi composition. One thing that you need to remember is that there's two types. Based on composition, is it simple or is it a compound? Okay, if it's simple, if it's, only made, it's only made up of one thing. If it's a compound, there's two or more. Okay, makikita nyo yung mga recipes mamaya. Kasi mga pangalan ng tao yan eh. Mga Heidenheim Susa, mga ganon. All right. Okay, so if it's based on action, you have to remember three things. Okay, based on action, it's what is it? Is it a microanatomic fixative? Is it a cytological fixative? Or is it a histochemical fixative? If it's a microscope, if if it's a microanatomic one, that's used for general microscopic studies. Ito yung mga nakikita natin sa hospital most of the time. If it's cytological, that's more specialized parts, the more specialized parts of the body, of the cell. Okay. Yan ay mga immunohistochemistry. Ay, may, yan ay mga MA enzymatic studies. Okay? An example of a cytological stain is the periodic acid shift. Okay? Which stains glycogen and helps in the diagnosis of of sarcoidosis. Okay? Hindi na ninyo dapat ang lalahanin yun. Pero kung gusto nyo malalahan, isulat nyo na lang sa notebook nyo. Okay? Class, um, what about uh, histochemical, sir? Histochemical, eh, we want to detect the chemical components of the cell. Ayan na yung mga sudan black. Diba? We want to see the, pa the fats. If you want to study the bone marrow, you use what? Pearls, Prussian blue to stain iron deposits, right? Do you guys still remember those? We talked about that when we studied he hematology. Eh, akala ko ba sir for hematology yun? Um, we have a part of hematology where it studies the bone marrow specifically and it and that part of the laboratory usually works with pathologists okay so um, even though even though it's work related to hematology the samples are still read by a pathologist an anatomic pathologist and in the Philippines the lines could get blurred kasi ang program ang residency program ng mga pathologists din sa Pilipinas ay eh, ano walang walang anatomic pathology lang bihira lang ata yun hindi ko maalala kasi sa MCU it's a double ano it's a double board certification ang end product mo pagka nagtrain ka sa MCU is it's a 5 year residency where you get uh, where you get where you get trained in both anatomic and clinical pathology so very rare dyan sa Pilipinas na makakita ka anatomic pathologist lang siya. Okay? Siguro doon sa mga elderly, katulad nung isa naming doktor doon dati sa MCU, si Dr. Ayu. Anatomic pathologist si Dr. Ayu. Anyways, let's move on. Um, cytologic fixatives can be classified as several things. 
you could uh, classify it as a lipid stay uh, as a lipid fixative a carbohydrate fixative protein fixative surgical fixative or an electrical electrocytochemistry fixative so there are several things that you can classify it as I uh, sorry cytologic pala ang asa nuclear and cytoplasmic lang pala sorry for histochemical yun nga yung sinabi ko lipids carbohydrates proteins and surgical biopsies i think that's the next one yeah all right next slide please now, we have to talk about the lipid-preserving fixatives. So most fixatives, they dissolve fats. Oh, fats are basically a pseudonym for lipids. I would call it not, not a pseudonym. It's like a homonym for, or a synonym, synonymous. Usually lipids are synonymous to fats, okay? Um, if it's for general lipid preservation, I would say uh, we would use, we need, we need to use mercuric chloride. And potassium dichromate but if you're using phospholipid preservation you have to use Baker's formal calcium bakit sir may pangalan ng tao kasi yung formulation naka trademark kay Baker siya yung scientist kasi na naka, naka ano. so if ever you hear something like that naka trademark sa kanya yan, kasi yung unang panahon siya ang nag invento Ngayon, hindi ka na makakarinig ng ganyan. Kaya nga, di ba yung ethylene diamine, hindi, hindi na yun pinangalan sa tao. Kasi ganun na yung discovery. Nung unang panahon, ganun ang klase ng discovery. Um, I think the American Association of... Um, American Medical Association wanted to wanted to remove that... Uh, that, um, that nomenclature na ipapangalan sa tao. Kasi nahihirapan yung mga tao na i-understand at iri alalahanin yung pangalan di ba so basically baker's formal calcium is a tincture of formaldehyde with a small amount of calcium kaya formal calcium siya okay cholesterol you use digitonin okay this one is a trademark name also from a company okay now we move on to the next one the next one is an alcoholic fixative Alcoholic fixatives are histochemical fixatives that preserve carbohydrates. Okay? They're the only ones that survive carbohydrates. Or, uh, the only ones that... Uh, the carbohydrates only survive in alcoholic fixatives. That's why... That's why if we want to study... Uh, if we want to look for... Uh, if we want to make a sureball diagnosis of sarcoidosis, we have to use alcoholic fixatives like... Um, like ethanol and uh, methanol, butanol also can be used as that. It can be used. We'll talk about it later. All right, glycogen is preserved by what histochemical fixative? It is used by uh, we use cold absolute alcohol or Rossmann's fluid. Again, Rossmann's fluid is just a recipe made by the scientist. Okay, it's just cold absolute alcohol. Okay. Anong klaseng absolute alcohol, sir? It is ethanol. Okay? Alright. Next. Kaya siya tinawag na ano pala na, na Rossmann's fluid. Kasi wala namang pinagkaiba. It's 100% ethanol. Pero ginamit niya to preserve, uh, to preserve the glycogen. And it was named after him because pinalamig lang niya. Yung methodology at saka yung recipe. Pinalamig lang niya. Okay? So, wala siyang ibang ginawa. Absolute alcohol lang na malamig to produce, uh, to preserve, um, to preserve the glycogen. Alright? So, grabe ka naman, sir. Pati pala yung ano niyan, pati yung, pati yung history. Yes, inaalala ko, class. Kaya nga alam ko yung pangalan ni Hayden ko. Kaya siya pinangalan sa Hayden, kaya pinangalan na Hayden ko dahil yung tatay niya, best friend si, best friend you, ay yung lolo niya, Best friend si Hayden yung nag-discover nag, 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 nung Hayden Hines Susa. Oh, di ba? Hindi nyo alam yun, class, no? <laughs> okay, mga nice to know kayo, di ba? Oh. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> wala na naman na, na kinalaman nyo. Hindi naman yan itatanong sa board exam, sir. But at least maaalala nyo si Hayden Hines Susa mamaya, di ba? Anyways, let's move on to the structure of proteins that can be preserved through histochemical fixation. So, um, secondary structures mostly, di ba? Ano ba yung mga secondary structures? Yung beta pleated sheets, tsaka yung alpha helices, ba? Yun yung kaya niyang i-preserve. Okay? 
um, it preserves this because um, because of coagulation. So if you coagulate something, the tertiary structure becomes destroyed. All you see is the amino acid links or the secondary structures, which is your alpha beta alpha 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 helices and beta pleated sheets. Okay, so alcohols. Um, sorry, um, histochemical fixation. Um, histochemical fixatives, specifically alcohols, cause coagulation. Okay, that's the reason why it can survive. All right, next. Secondary structures that are best preserved by what fixative? Methanol and ethanol. All right, so the secondary structures can be preserved by methanol and ethanol. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about electron cytochemistry. Sir, pwede din palang gamitin yung electron microscope sa cytochemistry. Yes, we can still use that one. And the fixative that we use for that one is Karnovsky, Karnovsky's paraformaldehyde. Glutaraldehyde. Ang haba naman, sir. Okay. Wala tayong magagawa. Class, kailangan ma-remember. Actually, yung stains class, notes lang ang ibibigay ko sa inyo. Kasi kung ano yung inaral namin sa Pilipinas, yun lang din yung ano. Okay? So, hopefully, matapos tayo hanggang microtomy. Kasi yung stains sa inyo, kung na yun ibibigay. Kasi wala talaga, I, I have no idea what to, what, what to teach you. Because the same, that was the same thing that they taught us. They gave, they say, they, they read everything in front of me. I'll be just reading it in front of you and that would be just boring, right? Kaya nga, gustong gusto ko, kaya nga nagustuhan ko na magturo Sir Marco ng ano, ng histopat. Just in case lang, you know, <laughs> baka mamaya mag makita na naman ako magkaroon ng suki card. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to surgical biopsies. Now, for surgical biopsies, we use a specific one. Um... Uh, preserved with a histo -fix histochemical fixative. Okay, so histochemical fixatives for surgical biopsies, we use acrolein, which is a formulation of formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. Okay, so again, it's a another tincture of formaldehyde with addition with a small amount of glutaraldehyde, ten to twenty percent uh, five to five to uh, three to five percent of glutaraldehyde. Do we need to remember the recipe? I don't think so. Because you will see later what I will ask you in the exams, okay? All you need to remember is what is the perp what uh, what is the composition of acrolein? Why is why do we use acrolein? All right. Aldehyde fixatives is the next one, I think. Yeah, aldehyde. Akala ko sir formaldehyde. Yes, ito na ngayon. Isa na yun sa ano natin. Okay. The most widely used fixative for routine paraffin sections is formaldehyde or formalin. Um, that's the next slide. Pakita natin. All right. And we use a 10% solution of it. Okay. And we should not forget. Uh, next slide. We should not forget one thing. Okay. Stock solutions of formaldehyde are commercially sold 30 to 40%. What would happen if it is was not diluted? Anything higher than 30% would cause tissue hardening and slower penetration rate. Okay? It would slower the penetration rate. Anything higher than 30%. Okay? So please remember to dilute your stock solution. Or kahit na, kahit na, na ano ka, ma, magmukha kang tanga, Sir, na-dilute na ba to? Every time, lagi nyo lalagyan pati ng label yung mga pin-repair ninyo class, ha? Ano lang siya? Um, what you call this? Chemical hygiene plan ang tawag doon. Ibig sabihin, you take accountability of everything you do. Okay? Kung hindi pwede post-it notes lang class ha, pag magli-label ha, kailangan ano, baka mamaya, <laughs> baka mamaya gayahin yung co-intern ko, nag-prepare siya ng ano, nag-prepare siya ng, <laughs> nag-prepare siya ng sahil, ng ano namin, ng ethanol namin gagamitin namin for his tupat. Nilagay niya sa post-it notes. <laughs> Tapos hinangin. Hindi na, na, hindi na niya alam kung ano yung 30% at saka yung 80%. <laughs> Di ba? So, kaya class ha, make sure you use, uh, you use proper, uh, you follow the guidelines of a chemical hygiene, of the chemical hygiene program when, when, in wherever you get hired. Okay? I suppose there's always a chemical hygiene plan. Hindi lang binabasa ng mga tao kasi ain't nobody got time for that. Right? Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Um, health, I think we're talking about the chemical action of formaldehyde fixatives. 
So formaldehyde fixatives are known um, are known to cross-link the methyl bridges of tissues, uh, methylene bridges of tissues. So yung um yung carbon yung carbon group niya, okay? Or yung methyl group niya. Um uh, pumapagit na siya doon kaya hindi siya nag hindi nagte-tear yung tissues. Okay? It becomes preserved. Kaya nagkakaroon ng crosslinks. Okay? Don't think of cro making crosslinks as the lattice formation in blood banking. Ah. Iba yun. Okay? Next, we're going to talk about formaldehyde when it, uh, um, uh, in terms of safety. Um, there is a health hazard to formaldehyde. That's, the, that's a big problem. Kaya nga kanina, di ba, yung isa sa mga uh, criteria natin for a good fixative is, is it safe? Compared to the other ones that we'll discuss later, formaldehyde is the better... Uh, bongs, uh, the better evil compared to the other ones. Okay, you'll see later why. Okay, so formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. And the OSHA guidelines for the exposure limit for formaldehyde is the thing, is the thing that we'll discuss on the next slide. It's 0 point, point, point 0 0.075 parts per million. Okay? Kaya ang pasok ng mga histotex namin dito, nililimit to 3, three days duty. 2 days off, 3 days duty lagi. Kasi para hindi sila nag ano. Merong mga nag duty ng 7 days duty, 7 days off. Kasi ang uh, pero ang ginagawa sa kanila sa ano, sa ibang department ng lab. Ganto ang workflow nila dito. Hindi katulad ay uh, Mark Segi diyan pa sa Pilipinas, paki ano nga sa akin. Paki sa akin kung ano ginagawa ng mga staff ninyo. Sila lang din ba on all processes? I can't hear anything. What's going on? I can't hear anything. <laughs> what happened? Paki type na lang. Ano ka mute? Rinig, ni, rinig nila. Ba't ako hindi ko na... Ah, kasi nawala na ng battery yung ano ko. Ah, anyway, anyways, bahala kayo dyan. Magchichika na lang ako. Sorry, 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 sorry. For me, I couldn't hear it because I just realized that my... I'm, I'm so sorry. I just realized that my headphones just lost battery. Oh. Kanina pa ako ng chika ng chika. Dapat nagsa sign language na pala kayo ngayon. Kaya ganyan ganyan na kayo ngayon dapat. Sorry, 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 sorry class. Kaya pala hindi ko marinig si Patrick kanina. Patrick. Sorry na Patrick. Okay. Anyways, um nasa na ba ako before I was so rudely distracted. Um Where were where was I? Yeah, 7 parts per million. Kasi ng binili. Ayun, ang ginagawa um uh, dito ka dito diyan sa Pilipinas dati. Naalala ko nung nagtatrabaho ako. Ayoko na maki hindi ko na makipapakinggan yung story ni Mark Segi eh. Diyan sa Pilipinas na nagtatrabaho. May may ka may katrabaho ko pangalan si Sir Phil. Si Sir Phil ang trabaho niya. Pag walang intern siya nag access Siya nag embed ng samples. nag assist din siya sa grossing. Tapos kung merong mga reagents na i-refill, siya din ang nagre-refill. And then at around at around 10 p.m. dadating si Ma'am Arlene at si Ma'am Des, sila yung magta-type ng results. And they do that as a rotation. But that doesn't limit the exposure to formaldehyde, di ba? So after some time, nag-resign na yung isa sa kanila. <laughs> Kasi para nakakaramdam na ng mga, mga kula-kulani, class. Okay? <laughs> medyo mga, medyo naglalaki-lakihan na yung mga kulani. Okay? So yun class yung dapat ninyong tandaan. Kung mag open ka Patrick ng ano mo, ng laboratory mo Patrick ha, Patrick. Okay? Kailangan yung mga staff mo sa histopat nagro-rotate ng iba't iba. Oh, lagay sa running water. My god, ni run pa. We na wash pa nila with water. My goodness. My goodness, kita mo yung exposure. Tapos, naka-fume hood ba sila? Hindi. Ah, meron naman. Doon kasi sa pinanggalingan kong hospital doon. Although, ano naman siya, training hospital naman siya. From BFH, BSA, B, ano yung BHFS. 
yun nga lang ano IBHRL pala Bureau of uh, Bureau of Reference Laboratories pa, ano BRL pala ayun pero gamit pa din pang grow yeah so yun yun yung problema kaya Patrick katandaan mo dapat 0.75 parts per million lang madedetect na formaldehyde sa na nagsi-circulate sa lab mo ha okay ikaw ang cadaver natin ngayon kaya ikaw yung pag-ano natin all right let's go to the next slide mo yung Okay, so what is the term for the precipitate that forms in formaldehyde solutions that have been stored in, for lengthy periods of time? This is known as paraformaldehyde. And in order for us to remove this, we add 10% methanol. Hindi siya contaminant class ha. Kasi one time, meron akong, ano, meron akong co-intern na nagtataka. Kasi tinataktak na niya yung last drops ng, ano, ng formaldehyde namin sa, ano, sa stock, so, sa nagagawin naming diluted solution. May buo-buo. Okay? At that time, hindi pa, both kami hindi namin alam pa. Okay? I was I was a student just like you once before. Hindi namin alam na may para formaldehyde pala na nagpo-form. Kasi hindi naman, hindi pa yan isa sa mga topics na ano, pinoproblema ko nun natin is uh, gano'n ko kaganda. Hindi, joke lang. <laughs> Char lang. Hindi, ang pinoproblema namin nun dati, ibang subject, di ba? Kasi katulad ninyo, nagtitake kami ng ibang subject din sa seminar, di ba? So, Medyo nawala sa isip namin na pwede pala mag-form ng formaldehyde, ng paraformaldehyde yung ano. So, lumapit kami dun sa ano. Yun nga si Sir Phil, sabi ni Sir Phil, ano ba yan? Hindi nyo alam yung para, ma- para- hindi nyo alam yung paraformaldehyde? Ginaganon kami. <laughs> na ano tuloy kami? Ay, oo nga, nagpo-form pala ng paraformaldehyde. Puti siya na ano, na precipitate sa ilalim. Parang, malili- parang maliliit siya na crystals class na medyo ano, medyo powdery. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Um, this is uh, 10% formal saline. Formal saline is a fixative used for um, <clears throat> CNS tissues and postmortem tissues. So, for example, nag-assist kayo sa um, nag-assist kayo sa autopsy. Yung mga organs na binabag, ilalagay sila sa ano sa formal saline. 10% formal saline, which is a recipe made from 40% formaldehyde plus NaCl and distilled water. Okay? So ano bakit NaCl sir? Hindi siya ano, hindi siya sa uh, hindi siya normal sa lime sir. Hindi. Yung salt na yung salt na NaCl ang gagamitin niyo, yung solid form ng NaCl. Okay? Kayo ang gagawa ng saline. All right? Yung recipe hindi ko na i-share sa inyo kasi baka maano tayo. Ma demonetize tayo and I don't think it would be asked in the board exam. Okay? Next, let's move on to the next one. Histochemical preservative. <coughs> what histochemical preservative does 10% formal, formal saline have? It's an enzyme preservative. Kaya nga important siya for, ano, for, post-mortem, uh, for post-mortem samples because you can still analyze what happened, uh, what caused the death of a person. Okay? All right, next. Um, this is an acid formalin pigment that forms when, tish- when tissues are fixed for long periods of time, specifically in heme ri- and blood rich tissues. Patrick, paki type nga kung ano yung ano, kasi hindi kita maririnig. Paki type nga kung ano, uh, magbigay ka ng isang organ or tissue na rich with heme or blood. Alam ko yan yung favorite mong organ. Pag hindi mo nasagot yan, nasampalin kita. <laughs> Sasampalin talaga kita, Patrick. Alright. Okay. So, um, the, for, the, the answer to this question is acid formalin or hematin pigments. And I think I have a picture for that one. Meron ba? Ayan. O, di ba bongga? This is from a pa- Facebook group known as Pathology Discussion Forum. Okay, so this is what it looks like in this uh, in this slide. So the black ones that you're seeing right now, that is a formalin pigment that mixes with heme. Okay, this is known as acid hematin, uh, acid formalin hemat- hematin pigments. That's usually from blood. This is actually from a kidney biopsy, if I'm not mistaken, because you can see the you can see the um yeah you can see the the um, what do you call this? The tubules. Okay? Look at the renal tubular epithelial cells. Right? 
for those of you who focused on studying your um, histology classes, you would see you would see the structures that denotes the appearance of kidney cells, right? So this is from a kidney. Anyways, let's move on to the next slide. This is the best fixative for general fixation. Um, <clears throat> for general fixation, lagi lagi niyong narinig yan, okay? Um, ten percent NBF, and it's best used for iron-containing tissues, okay? Because it avoids the formation of acid hematin or acid formalin hematin, okay? Neutral buffered formalin, NBF. All right, next. What fixative was created? Where is created when formalin is added to is added to mercuric chloride? This is known as formal corrosive, traditionally known as formal corrosive, but it's now known as formal sublimate. Okay, it's a sublimate. It's specifically used for um, a histochemical stain for lipids, especially neutral fats and phospholipids. Okay. Next slide. Formal sublimate is routinely used for specific procedures, but it is important for post-mortem fixation, just like your neutral, your formal saline, your 10% formal saline, saline, sorry. Saline ako ng saline. From, nasa America na pala tayo. Charing lang. Charing lang. Okay? Alright. So, uh, no. next naman tayo. Next slide. True or false? Formal sublimate fixed samples do not need to be washed out with alcohol. That is a that is a question for you guys. Formal sublimate needs to be washed out with alcohol. Basically, what we're, what are we doing with alcohol? Why do we need to wash everything with alcohol? Because we want to do dehydration, right? So, is it true that formal sublimate samples do not need alcohol, alcohol washing or dehydration? True or false? Ayan na mga Google Warriors. Biglang tumayo sa, biglang tumayo sa pagkakaupo si, ano eh, si Dexter eh. Si Dexter yung nunang una ko nakita gumalaw na ano eh. Is it true daw? True. Pag tinanong ko kaya kung ba't ma ba bakit, may makakasagot. <laughs> Sige na, hindi na ako magtatanong kung bakit. Sige, ayan na maglalabasa na yung mga nagsagot. Oh. <laughs> hindi ako magtatanong kung bakit. Sige. Answer people. Hindi ko pa nakikita yung ano eh. Five, four. Ang onti naman ng mga students natin ngayon, Sir Marco. Bakit parang sila lang? Nasaan na yung mga main character natin last time? Yung original cast of... <laughs> yung original cast. Yung Ghost Fighter. Ay, nakikita ko palang si Taguro Junior tsaka si Taguro Senior. <laughs> Kilala nyo na kung sino kayo. Hindi, nyo na kailang, hindi ko na kailangang sabihin kung sino. <laughs> Nakangisi na kayong dalawa si Taguro Senior at si Taguro Junior. <laughs> okay. So, pakita natin ang tamang sagot, Moyo. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, true. The fixative does not need to be uh, washed with alcohol because this is also a dehydrating agent. Okay. So, that's the reason why. Okay. Now, let's move on to the next one. What is the other name for alcoholic formalin? This is gender's fluid. Um, the formula, the uses of this one is that it's used for immunoperoxidase studies, rapid diagnosis. It could be used to fix sputum by coagulating mucus and glycogen preservation. Okay, so wag nyo kakalimutan si gender's fluid kasi lagi siyang lumalabas sa board exam. Maski dun sa exam nung mga ano nung mga estudyante dito sa US tinanong siya gender fluid or, or another term is alcoholic formalin or formal alcohol 
formal alcohol pala. Sorry. Okay, next. We're going to talk about glutaraldehyde. Glutaraldehyde is special because you can it's the one that is best used for electron microscopy. And it is also is uh, it's what uh, additionally it's used for the preservation of plasma proteins. Okay? So when we want to demonstrate multiple myeloma, we can use also glutaraldehyde because it preserves plasma proteins. And ano bang ba meron sa mga pasyente na merong multiple myeloma? They have what antibody uh, can uh, malignant antibody producing plasma cells, di ba? So you can use that to study it also. Aside from electron microscopy, kaya ang nilagay ko lang kasi kaya naka all cap si electron microscope kasi most of the time it's used for electron microscopy. Okay, next. Um, glutaraldehyde is commonly used in conjunction with another fixative which is known as osmium tetroxide, okay? Glutaraldehyde is oftentimes used with osmium tetroxide, okay? So, kailangan natin ng may konting metal. You'll know why later when we study electron microscopy, okay? Tatandaan nyo lang pag may electron microscopy, <coughs> dapat kailangan may kasamang metal kung nagsifix ka. You'll see later why. Okay, next. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using um, of using glutaraldehyde? Well, the advantages is that it is stable. It causes less cellular cellular shrinkage. It is it is a slight um, it's a slight um, irritant compared to other formalin based fixatives. What's this? What's the disadvantage? Disadvantages to uh, this damn disadvantages to use. Uh, its disadvantages rather is that it is expensive and it's slow penetrating. Okay? Hindi niya pina-follow yung rule na 1 mm per hour ni formalin. Okay? Okay, so I have a question to ask from people. So since 1 mm per hour ang 1 mm mm per hour ang formalin How long would you say? Uh, how long would it would it take to completely fix a pan a ten millimeter? skin biopsy Sige nga Sino makakasagot niyan? Yan yung mga common sense question na naman na hindi na hindi masyadong nagpe-pay attention yung mga students ko. Who can answer that question? First person to type in their answer. Oh, tarik talaga ni Patrick oh. Hindi ko pa sasasabi yung price. First person who an to answer my question gets my praise and adoration lang. <laughs> kala mo ha? Kala mo pera? <laughs> By praise and adoration. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the next. <laughs> Hindi mo pa kasi ako pinatapos eh. <laughs> How many aldehyde groups are present in... Friend, hindi ako pwede mamigay ng pera ngayong, ba, ngayong ano. Sa bagong taon tayo mamimigay ha. Magpupunta ako ng New York, gagastos ako ng pera doon. Nadaan kami ng 6th Avenue. Nandoon yung mga mamahalin. Ano ba? Maglulustay tayo ng pera doon, Patrick. Tama na yung kay Dexter tsaka kasi hindi pa nga nagpapa, hindi pa nga nagpapa, nagpapa, ano yung paparamdam yung isa eh. Sino ba yung isa? Moyo. Di ba dalawa yon? Patay hindi ko marinig wala pa akong headset. <laughs> yung pangalwa, yung pangalwa. Hindi pa ako nagtatanong ng pangatlo kasi mas malaki yung sa pangatlo. Ay, mamaya na kumaabala yung ano natin. Wag, wag yan. Mamaya na lang. Maaabala yung ano natin, yung lecture natin. 
Ah, yung Kim Kylie. Okay. Next week, next year na tayo, mami. Ay, bakit nandiyan na naman yung pangalan ko? Ganda talaga ng pangalan na yan. Oh, chari. <laughs> Charing lang. Okay, so let's talk about um, the chemical composition of glutaraldehyde. How many aldehyde groups are present in the glutaraldehyde molecule? So the glutaraldehyde molecule has two, um, <coughs> has <coughs> two aldehyde groups, just like any aldehyde group, I suppose. But what's important about what's important that you need to remember is that um, the one glutaraldehyde uh, molecule binds to the tissue and the other one is free. Okay, so it's the one that flows around it that floats around in the, not, it doesn't float around. It's more on exposed in the in the solution. So when you the reason why I ask this is that it's important because we want to see if a glutaraldehyde uh, um, tissues that are fixed with glutaraldehyde will test a false positive with PSA, PAS test, periodic acid shift, okay? They will test false positive. That's why we always want to know why glutaraldehyde, uh, we wanted to, uh, scientists at the past wanted to know why glutaraldehyde tests positive with that one. And they found out that the free reacting um, aldehyde group is the one that reacts to their PAS reagents or the PAS stains. Okay, next, let's move on to the preservation of lipids. Um, this is a fixative that is used to preserve adipose tissue, specifically pos phospholipids. So in order for us to, um, the best ones to use is Baker's solution, which is, I think I mentioned earlier, um, it's basically a, combi a tincture of formaldehyde with a small amount of um, calcium okay so that's also known as baker's solution i don't want to give you guys the formula because we want we don't want to get demonetized <laughs> no i'm kidding it's not usually it's not relevant for the purpose of this lecture because we want you to get the highest grade as much as possible in your board exams and later uh, subsequent in your upcoming exams so I do not think that one. What I want you guys to remember about Baker's solution is that what it's ma what's it made of, and what it's used for. Okay. So that's the reason why I added it there. Okay. Now, specimens for electro um, specimens for electrohistochemistry and immunohistochemistry need what fixatives? As, uh, again, I mentioned that one or earlier also. That's Karnovsky's solution or Karnovsky's paraformaldehyde, glutaraldehyde solution. When you remove the middle part, ano nga yung paraformaldehyde na yan? Yan yung namumuo kapag prolonged storage. Okay? Hindi yan contaminant. Okay? So paraformaldehyde can be made by mixing together, uh, by mixing together the paraformaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. Okay? Next, acrolin is another thing it basically it is a different um a different formulation of karnovsky solution wherein the components are are almost the same formalin and glutaraldehyde it's primarily used for surgical biopsies so if you got a punch specimen or a incision or something you'd use um Karno you'd use acrolin okay now this is the smallest dialdehyde chemical that is used for replacing formalin that is slowly replacing rather formalin because it is less toxic and it can be used for extremely rapid cases. We use glyoxal. Okay? Glyoxal. Glyoxal. Okay? What should not be fixed, I think, is the next question. Yeah. Which sample should not be fixed in glyoxal are breast tissues because... Most samples for breast tissues, they are tested for different types of cancers, okay, in the breast. And madami, madami yon class. So, we want to have the most, uh, the most antigenically uh, reactive uh, sample, okay. So, although slowly, uh, although glyoxal is slowly replacing um, formaldehyde, it still can't be used for breast tissue because right now 
the trend in the in the histopathology world is immunohistochemistry. So we need we it causes the uh, antigenicity. It loses uh, the breast tissue in particular loses antigenicity when this when samples are exposed to this uh, to this chemical. And additionally, it causes the produ production of microcalcification and loss of basophilia. So you won't be able to see, you won't be able to clearly see the nuclei, the nuclear, um, the nuclear. Uh, you won't be able to appreciate the nuclear structures of the cells, the or what the the tissue that you're looking at. Okay. Now we move on to metallic fix fixatives. I think that's the next one. Okay. So metallic fixatives are, um, there's only three, um, I think, or th there's only three metals that we use in the clinical lab and histopatho in histopathology laboratories. This is mercury chloride or di dichloride mercury, or mercury dichlorides rather, sorry. And that's the most common. We use lead and chrome also, okay? In general, mercury chloride, next slide, uh, in general, um, mercury chloride usually have um, are you generally uh, sorry mercury chloride is generally used for tissue photography because they have um, they 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 just take pictures well there's a higher definition in the microscope when you see it uh, when you view it in the microscope specifically for renal tissues fibrin connective tissues and muscle fibers okay so don't forget if you heard the term, um, if you see the word uh, tissue photography, you know. Remember we discussed earlier um, digital pathology. So one of the reasons why mercury chloride is still in the laboratories right now is because of the upcoming uh, is because of the slow but consistent uh, popularity of digital patho digital pathology. Okay. So you end up at okay. Next, so we have um, we have different types of mercury-based fixatives. There's four of them. Okay, kaya may asterisk four ako nalilagay dyan. You you have the Zenker the Zenker solutions two of them. You have Heidenheim Susa and B five fixative. Okay, ayan na wag niyo na kakalimutan yun na. Zenker solution, Zenker formal or Heli solution, Heidenheim Susa and B5 fixative. Madali lang yang class, okay magalala. Okay? May mga shortcuts sa Sir Manuel niyo diyan. Wag kayong magalala. Another name for uh, mercury chloride is corrosive pre it was traditionally known as corrosive sublimate or the bichloride of mercury. Okay? Bichloride of mercury rather. And they these substances or these chemicals you leave behind a pigment but it can be removed that's um, we'll, we, we, we just need to talk about first the chemi the chemistry so you guys know what to do when you're troubleshooting okay so mercury based fixatives they leave behind a brown pigment and this pigment can be removed through the po process of that was known that is known as desenkerization okay and i wanted you guys to know what uh, who proposed or invented the Zenker fluid, uh, Zenkers first. And the Zenkerization is done with uh, two steps. You have to do iodine treatment and thiosulfate wash, okay? For formaldehyde-based um, samples, except for, um, except for a specific one, you use alcohol. But for um, mercury-based um, fixatives, you use desenkerization okay what you do is you start first with iodine because the iodine will will precipitate mercury to form mercuric iodide and then you do the thiosulfate wash which is soluble to mercuric iodide ions the reason why we use thiosulfate wash is because the thiosulfate acts as a chelating agent so to speak it separates the toxic mercuric iodide molecules. Okay? So that's the basic process of mercury uh, desenkerization. Okay? Clear? Now you might ask the question again, sir, do we still have to perform dehydration? Yes. We still need to remove 
remain the remaining um remaining uh, thiosulfate molecules okay all right so let's move on to the next slide um, this is a mercury-based fixative that is useful in preserving liver, spleen, connected tissue fibers, and nuclei. And that is known as your Heli solu Zenker fluid. Sorry, not Heller solution. Zenker fluid. Zenker fluid uh, also has another alteration, and I think that's on the next slide, which is known as Zenker formol. Another name for that one is Heli solution or Heli fluid. It's primarily used for four things. For the fixation of pituitary glands, bone marrow samples, liver, and splenic samples. What do you think is the difference between these things? Between these, aside from pituitary gland, they are what? blood rich right? They are blood rich samples, right? Except for the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is more or less fatty, okay? Because it has a lot of hormones. Hormones are what? Majority of hormones are sterol based. Diba? Diba, diba? So, nakita nyo kung anong separate, kung paano sila separate sa isa't isa. Diba? Bloody and fatty. We use Heli's fluid. Oh. Clear na. Yung nasa kabila, patay tayo dyan. Paano na? Sir, paano namin maalala yung ano? Si Zenker si fluid. May nucleolizer. <laughs> Okay? Huwag kayo mag-alala. Maano-ano ma natin yan. Maiisa-isa natin yan fast. Okay? Now, we have to use to, we have to use another um, another mercury-based um, fixative. Next slide. We use Heidenheim Sousa. Okay? Huwag nyo kakalimutan. Yung lolo ni ano ha? Yung lolo ni Hayden ko. Okay? Kaya pinangalan na, pinangalan na siyang Hayden ho, na Hayden dahil kaibigan ng lolo niya yung si Hayden na yan. Hindi ko lang alam kung bakit mali ang spelling. Okay? Basta yun ang kinuwento sa amin ng dati kong boss. Okay? Hindi ko sure kung totoo or chika lang din. Alright? So, for tumors naman yung Hayden Hayden Susa. Okay? Susa is basically short for sublimate. Okay? Sublimate. It's German for sublimat. Kaya, dalawang ano siya. Actually, hindi ganyan ang spelling ng Susa niya. Capital SU, capital SA dapat yan. Okay? Um, SU stands for sublimate. SA stands for sublimat. Okay? Which is the German word for sublimate. Alright? So, huwag nyo kakalimutan yung ano ha? Huwag nyo kakalimutan yung Heidenheim Susan na yan kasi tinanong yan sa isang board exam ng kaibigan ko. Tumor biopsies. Okay? Next. Ang question is which metal uses a susa a, 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 a susa recipe for preservation for the, for the preservation of tumors isa lang naman ang sagot Heidenheim susa ano bang gawa ni saan ba gawa si Heidenheim susa sa mercury di ba ganon ganon na mga tanungan okay class okay now when using Heidenheim susa what special procedure is added to tissue to the tissue pro, to tissue processing we add secondary fixation, okay? So primary fixation is usually done with a neutral buffered formalin pagkakuha ng tumor, okay? After kuhanin yung tumor, saka gagamitin yung Heidenheim Susa, yung sublimat, okay? So clear? All right. <clears throat> Next. Next. Chromate fixative, fixatives are used for the preservation of what? We mentioned that earlier. Um, it's for carbohydrates. Right? And there are three things. The, there are three types, I think, of... Um, uh, next slide. There are, three there, are three there are three types of... Sorry, three examples of chromate-based fixatives. Again, pangalan na naman ng mga tao to. Um... Orts fluid, Regod's fluid, and wow, may chemical. Potassium dichromate. Okay? So, Regod's fluid, um, another name for Regod's fluid is Mueller's fluid, which is used for the demonstration of chromatin, mitochondria, mitotic figures, Golgi body, um, 
RBCs and colloid containing tissue. Can we move to the next 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 slide? Yeah. So another name for Regold's fluid, Mueller's flu Mueller's fluid, and it demonstrates six things: chromatin, mitochondria, mitotic figures, Golgi bodies, and RBCs and colloid containing tissues in the thyroid. So ma ang difference naman nito class is it looks into cytochemical. Uh, in, it looks into the cytology of the cells, the actual the actual structures. Okay, so chromatin is more on uh, the nuclear structure, and uh, um, the mitotic figures also has to de has to demonstrate what the what do you mean by mitotic figures class? Yung nagsi separate mismo yung cells. Okay, so it can preserve that one. Yung mga nakikita nyo sa books niyo yung yung nag uh, ano yung mga yung stages of mitosis. Yun yung, the reason why we can see those is because previously the the people the, our predecessors or previous scientists studied it using Mueller's fluid or Rigaud's fluid. Okay. So also don't forget the colloid containing tissue, which is thyroid. Now we move on to another one, which is potassium dichromate. So potassium dichromate, it's almost the same. Uh, it's not the same actually. It preserves the mitochondria just like uh, just like Mueller's fluid, but it can also help with the preservation of lipids. Okay. And then lastly, next slide, please. Lastly, we have to talk about Orth's fluid under the chromate fixatives. So under this one, um, Orth's fluid, Orth fluids, sorry, Orth's fluid is used for studying the early degenerative process or tissue necrosis and myelin and rickettsial um, demonstration rickettsia class ah yung kalimutan yung mga rocky mountain spotted fever na yan okay next nice to know <clears throat> nice to know pheochromocytomas are best demonstrated when specimens are fixed with orth's fluid so pheochromocytomas are chromo chromaffin granules in the adrenal glands um, I think I have a picture on the next slide, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, we don't have a slide. Oh, sorry. I think I didn't save that one. You would, uh, you would see what an adrenal gland looks like in the slide. But anyways, um, you'll see chromaffin granules in that one, and it is used for the diagnosis of Argent papinoma. Okay. Ang haba naman sir, but ano ba yan sir? Bakit ganon? May mga argent tafinoma, sir. Wala namang ganyan, di ba? Histopathology nga to eh. Histopathologic techniques, di ba? <laughs> Kailangan ninyong alalahanin. So, orts fluid yung ginagamit. Okay? Next. Um, mucopolysaccharides are best preserved with uh, by what metallic fixative? We use lead on this one. Lead fixatives. And this is an insoluble pigment produced in samples fixed in lead. I think that's the one, next slide, I think. Yeah. Um, the... Oh, what happened? Somebody texted. Sorry. Ah, pinapagbook na ako. Pinagaano na ako. Pinagaano na ako ng flight ko. <laughs> Pinagsasign in na ako. Um, anyways, um, lapit na. Magsasign in ako dyan. This is an insoluble pigment produced when samples are fixed in lead fixatives so this insoluble pigment is known as lead carbonate okay and you have to use filtration to remove it filtration of solution or add acetic acid or suka okay you have to add acetic acid next we have to talk about also uh, we also have to talk about picric acid based fixatives there's only two don't forget Bowen's and Brazil's okay Bowen's solution is used for glycogen and embryo preservation embryo sir yung para sa mga animals okay chill lang kayo okay hindi tayo nangunguha ng ano hindi tayo talaga nagpapreserve ng mga fetus na nakikita natin klasa <laughs> okay yung sa mga ano yan yung sa mga animal studies yan and then Brazil's flu alcoholic solution is also used for glycogen preservation okay next since we're talking about picric acid picric acid is not allowed to dry 
because if it becomes anhydrous, it forms an explosive substance. Okay? So we always have a, hydro, uh, a hydrated form of picric acid because it become, if it becomes anhydrous, it forms a powder that is very explosive. Okay? Let's talk about the next thing. Dyes that are best used for picric acid, uh, picric, picric fixed tissues, aniline dyes. So, kasama dyan yung eosin. So, we can use HME when we're testing, when we're, when we're um, processing a sample that has been fixed with, uh, that has been fixed with picrate. Okay? Next. But, 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 there is a problem when you're using picrate. It produces a yellow stain that tends to interfere with staining and we have to remove it in order for us to remove that we use again 5% thiosulfate with water oh sorry and then with water okay i sorry sorry you have to use uh, ethanol 70% and then um <coughs> use 5% sodium thiosulfate and then water okay so, walang term doon sa kanya. So, if you must call it depicrinization, go. Okay? So, to remove the yellow pigment, 70% ethanol, then 5% um, then five percent sodium thisulfate, then water. Okay? Next. Picrate fixatives act as a mordant for which staining procedure? Trichrome stains. Okay? Don't forget trichrome stains. Trichrome stains are named as such because you only use one color, but they have different. They, they I, sorry, they, you only use the, you use three colors, and it will help you. Uh, you it will help you uh, differentiate a, a wide variety of cells or structures in a particular specimen. Next. We have to talk about glacial acetic acid, which is a non-metallic, non-formaldehyde-based sample. A non-formaldehyde, non non-metal-based fixative, not sample. Fixative dapat. Okay? You have to know why it's called glacial acetic acid. So, pag sinabi nyo glacier, di ba? Malamig. The reason being is because, the, the reason being is because gla the glacial acetic acid solidifies at 17 degrees celsius okay it solidifies it becomes like a sol uh, an acetic acid salt and it is generally uh, sorry next slide it is generally used for studying nucleoproteins and chromosomes okay um next the main disadvantage of using glacial acetic acid is that it destroys cytoplasmic structures like the mitochondria and the Golgi, Golgi apparatus. Okay? It's good when we want to study nucleoproteins and chromosomes, which is the reason why it's used for karyotyping. Okay? If you look at the uh, if you look at the we call this the procedures for certain um, karyotyping tests you will see glacial acetic acid almost at the first at the initial step okay next we have to talk about alcohol fixatives as well hindi kasi excluding formal um, alcohol okay so mechanisms of alcoholic preservation so uh, what it does is that it again every time we every time we talk about another uh, another fixative or any other chemical we have to talk about its chemistry first so the mechanism of alcohol fixatives is that it denatures protein by destroying hydrogen bonds, okay, thus coagulating the tertiary structure, revealing what again? Alpha, alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, okay. It's S H E E T ha. Kayo talaga, kayo ka talaga Patrick ka na kang easy ka na naman. Puro ka kalokohan. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, what is the main disadvantage of using alcoholic fixatives? It causes um, it causes glycogen polarization. 
what glycogen polarization is is that glycogen moves forward uh, moves towards the periphery of the cells resulting to the altered um, cell morphology so sometimes we might mistake a certain cell as um, epithelial cells because instead of um, glycogen staying in the middle it looks altered because they move towards the um, the opposite side of or they, they become po uh, glycogen becomes polar okay and it can cause um, it can cause misdiagnosis if uh, if glycogen counts are or if the amount of glycogen in a specific cell has be has appears to have uh, have decreased due to the polarization okay next alcohol fixatives we have um we have i think yeah we have five and the most commonly used one is 95 percent ethanol which is also a dehydrating agent as i mentioned before methanol carnois fluid genders fluid or alcoholic formalin and newcomers okay the most rapid um the most rapid alcoholic fixative is carnois solution or carnois fluid which can be used for the diagnosis of rabies using brain tissues. It can also be used to fix chromosomes, just in case you didn't know. Next, we also have to talk about methanol, which is used in fixing what specimens? Magadag intern, methanol is used for what? Pakitaip. Pakitay pa. Oh, hindi, ko hindi ko makita kasi James Paul. Sorry, James Paul. Nagsasalita si James Paul kaso hindi ko marinig kasi nga ano. Lobat yung ano ko. Eh, ayoko namang mag-echo pagka nagsalita si James Paul. Blood smear. Very good. Blood samples or bone marrow smear. Very good. Bakit may question mark? Hindi ka sure, James Paul. Bakit may question mark? Very good, James Paul. James Paul, hindi nga kita marinig. Magsalita, mag magsalita kayo through chat. Okay? Hindi ako makarelate. <laughs> hindi ka sure talaga. Bakit? Iniinom ni James Paul yan? Hindi mo pwedeng inumin yan, James Paul, ha? Mabubulag ka, James Paul. Pag ininom mo yan, it's toxic to the optic nerve. Okay. Which alcohol I think is the next one for sputums? Yeah. So for sputum samples, it's used uh, the best one that we use is gender's fluid. I think I mentioned that one before. And next slide. Um the alcoholic fixative used for preservation of mucous polysaccharides is newcomer solution. Next, we move on to osmium tetroxide. Osmium tetroxide is um there's only one name for this one so it's so it's nice to know that it's not gonna be hard for you guys to remember osmium tetroxide um you only need to remember fleming guy a guy named fleming because there's two things fleming solution without acetic acid and fleming solution with acetic acid so if it's used for um again the two is two uh, the two is different uh, can you show it to us a uh, moyo Okay, so there's two examples of osmium, te osmium tetroxide based um, solution. Uh, one is Fleming solution with acetic acid that is used for s s nuclear, uh, nuclear structures. And Fleming solution without acetic acid is cytoplasm. BMA tragedy, bone marrow. Ano yung BMA tragedy? I'm sorry. Oh! Oh, pakikwento sa akin. Gusto ko yan para pwede kong ikwento sa mga future batch. Okay? Huwag kayong mag-alala. Alright. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. So, osmium tetroxide-based fixatives must be kept in what kind of containers? It must be kept in chemically clean um, dark colored chemically chemically clean bottles why because 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 class it's highly um, reactive maski maski ilaw lang or araw magre-react siya okay 
what you also need to remember about osmium tetroxide based fixatives is that it forms uh, next slide it forms a black precipitate and it can only be removed by washing it out with cold water diba water lang o diba so pwede na pwede na tayo mag open Patrick ng laboratory natin water lang pala tapos osmium tetroxide yung gagamitin natin chill ka lang meron yun ano, disadvantage mamaya okay Alright, so what is the main, um, I think, uh, next slide. What is the main advantage of using osmium tetroxide? So, when we use osmium, osmium tetroxide, kanina ko pa yan pinaulit-ulit, diba? You use it for electron microscopy, diba? Bakit? Kasi in electron microscopy, you need a metal like osmium tetroxide. Hindi kasi lalabas yung cellular structures pag binaril siya ng laser. Okay? And one of the things why it's also helpful in, in electron microscopy is that it helps preserve fats, making it insoluble to the subsequent processing of, of that tissue. Okay? Next. We also have to talk about other fixatives that are not based of or out of any other basic, uh, out of any other parent formulation. Okay, so other fixatives that we have to talk about is your um, trifluoroacetic acid. Oh, yeah. So yeah, um, this is a fixative. Uh, basically, trifluoroacetic acid can act as a weak decalcifying agent. Next slide. Is that correct? Yeah. So trichloro uh, trichloroacetic acid. Next one is the disadvantage of trichloroacetic acid is that it has poor penetration. It means it doesn't follow the one minute per hour rule. So it's even slower than that. Next. Um, acetone. Uh, acetone is used to preserve samples from what organ? You'll hear this over and over again throughout our discussion. Rabies. Okay for brain material. This fixative must be used at cold temperatures. That's why it's useful. Uh, that's why we use, we sometimes use acetone as a fixative for samples in the cryo, uh, cryostat machine. Okay? Heat fixations are, um, heat, fixa heat fixes samples through coagulation of proteins, so that's another form of, that's a non-chemical, uh, that's a form of physical fixation. We'll talk about another form of fixation, which is microwave fixation, okay? Um, because, uh, microwave fixation because uh, what happens is that it increases the movement, sorry, next slide. So microwave fixation improves penetration of formalin because it increases the movement of molecules, reducing the fixation of tissues from 12 hours to 20 minutes. Nakita nyo kung gano'ng kabilis. Diba? Pag nag-microwave fixation tayo. Talaga sir, may na-microwave pala yung ano. Wait lang, chill lang kayo. Yung mga ganyan, may vacuum seal yan, class ha. Hindi yan yung, kala mo nag-init ka lang ng pansit kanton na ano, na handa, tapos ilalagay sa microwave. Merong setup yan, class. Baka mamaya, ay, sir, merong microwave sa ano, sa initan ng pagkain ng mga pathologist. Pwede ko bang dalhin yung tissue doon tapos test ko kung mabilis yung fixation. Tira ulo ka, pasabugin mo yung laboratory nyo. Huwag ganun ha. Lahat ng tinuturo ko dito may mga safety hazards ha. Huwag, huwag bidabida. <laughs> okay? Patrick ha, huwag ka bidabida ha sa laboratory. Baka mamaya makakita ka, ay, ang tagal naman ng ano natin. Ang tagal naman ng fixation, 12 hours. Sabi ni Sir Manuel, mapapabilis natin ng 20 minutes. Halika dito, dalhin natin. Mark Segi sa ano, sa pantry. Doon tayo, ano, isabay natin sa iniinit, ko na, iniinit mo na french fries from, ay, na hamburger sa McDo. O, di ba? May formalin na katabi yung ano. Huwag ganun ha. Huwag kayong puro kalokohan. Okay? So, it decreases the um, fixation time from 12 hours to 20 minutes. Now, because we have to talk about microwave fixation, the reason why microwave fixation in the histopathology laboratory is different is because of the frequency that we use. Okay? So most uh, most cooking uh, for most cooking purposes it's greater than it's greater than the histopathology setting. 
Okay, because the histopathology setting is only at 2,450 megahertz. Ay, millihertz. Okay? Kaya hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yung pangkapangkain, ha? <laughs> okay, Mark Segi. Wag, wag gagamitin sa pangkain, ha? Alright. Let's move on to the next one. The, the, what is the main disadvantage of using microtope, micro, microscope, uh, microwave fixation? The main disadvantage is that it causes it crosses the um, formalin vapors to form, and it accelerates the degeneration process. Okay, so kasi nga may pinaiinit ka eh, so nagko form yun ng vapors. Okay. Now we have to talk about fixative artifacts. So mga slides na yung mga makikita nyo next. Okay. So there are some uh, there are six uh, fixative artifacts that we will discuss so let's go at them one by one um, examples of fixative artifacts and the colors they produced when when they are viewed in the microscope so acid formalin e hematin nakita nyo na siya kanina so it's a bra brown black extracellular granules mercury chloride is black chromate is yellow at the brown and then and then we have osmium tetroxide and malarial pigments as black also and picric acid is a yellow pigmented gold, uh, yellow pigmented um, artifact okay so how can we remove this how can we remove this so acid hematin or the lilies method okay Acid hematin can be removed using the Cardiwith method or the Lilith, Lilies method using 1% KOH and saturated alcohol picrate. Mercury chloride, we've already talked about that. The iodine, uh, iodine, first step is iodine step, and then the second step is, the second step is, what was that again? 5% um, um, thiosulfate, right? Yeah, next one is chromate. You just use acid alcohol or tap water. Osmium tetroxide is also the same. For malarial pigments, we want to we want to wash it out with alcoholic picric acid, and picric acid needs to be washed off with seventy percent alcohol. Again, the alcohol that we use is ethanol. All right, that is the end of fixation, diba? We finished one semester's worth of material about uh, about everything everything fixative safety hazards as well Sin sina sinaksak ko na lahat sa isang ano plus a little bit of troubleshooting right so the next thing that we're going to talk about is is ano nga ba na isend ko ba yung ano <laughs> and i we'll, we'll stop there for a while i'll give you guys an hour Okay, kasi mag-impake pa ako, ano ba? 